Good evening, members of council, ladies and gentlemen, staff. I see that we have quorum and I call this regular meeting for the town of Pelham to order. I wish uh, each of you happy holidays. We are trying to uh, get a number of items in, um, done before the end of the year and that's why we are a little bit delayed um, in our start of the meeting. So uh, please, uh, please forgive us for that. So thank you. We will begin our meeting, uh, start with the singing of the national anthem, and I would ask all who are able to rise and Councillor Papp to lead us. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patron of, in all thy sons command, with glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God keep our land, glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen It's uh, and council. It's great to have many people in the audience uh, singing along, so thank you very much. We'll start uh, with the adoption of the agenda. It's been moved by Councillor Ribiak, seconded by Councillor Durley, that the agenda for the December 18th, 2017 meeting of Council be adopted as circulated. Uh, I do have a, um, an amendment here as requested by one of the delegations. Uh, Councillor Durley, I think, is, is uh, going to change this. I might need a... Do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Papp. I'm sorry, is it Councillor... Papp. Pap. Councillor Papp Durley. Oh, Durley Papp. Uh, that we move item 961 to immediately following the uh, presentation at uh, 521. So that we, we're going to be hearing from uh, members of the Township of West Lincoln and we'll deal with that item immediately following. There are also letters and things there on the agenda, but they're just on consent. Okay, can I have um, a, a vote on that amendment? All those in favor, any opposed, that amendment carries. Thank you. Any other items to change on the agenda? There being none, I'm going to call the question as amended. All those in favor, any opposed, that motion carries. Thank you. The next item is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. That is any conflicts of interest that any members of council may have as a result of the reports or items that we're discussing this evening. Do any members of council have any conflicts they need to disclose publicly? No, no Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Can that be so noted? I do not have any either. Uh, we will start uh, into presentations and delegations. The first is uh, presentations to some E.L. Crosley art students who are here, many of whom are here this evening. And um, we actually have their, their teacher here who's going to... Uh, give us a little bit of um, information. And we also have staff, uh, Vicki Van Ravensway. I'm gonna turn it over to Vicki to maybe introduce um, our, the staff member from Yale Crosley. And uh, you can come and uh, tell us a little bit more about the program and what, you, what you've done. Ms. Van Ravensway. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to introduce uh, Sherry Wilkinson. She is the Yale Crosley um, <coughs> visual arts, arts teacher. And we've been working with Sherry over the past couple of years on different projects. And Sherry approached us with this wonderful project. And I'm going to turn it over to Sherry because she. Okay. Thank you. Please come up to the podium. Okay, thank you. Excuse me, where there's the. Yeah, right there is perfect. It feels very unnatural turning my back to everyone. Um, but first of all, I'm just going to make sure that I look at my list that I acknowledge everyone that I'm supposed to acknowledge appropriately. Um, so we have a, a number of artworks on display on this wall, this wall, the north room, and over the photocopier. These are a combination of grade 9 students and grade 11 students. And uh, at the grade 9 level, students were asked to look at ways in which they could compose real life objects, drawing from actual observation uh, to heighten their perception skills 
and learn about creating depth in a two-dimensional plane. So um, there were 11 pieces selected in total. They were voted on by the students of the classroom to go on to this show. And um, I congratulate them. They did an excellent, excellent job. For many of them, this was their first time drawing. Not for all, but for many. And at the grade 11 level, you'll see the montage pieces. Mm. Um, we had discussed in that class uh, the idea of uh, what does it mean uh, to live in today's modern world mm. with all of our issues of garbage and uh, you know, small land masses quickly filling with, with uh, garbage disposal. So they quickly went home and gathered found objects. We called them the junk drawers. Emptied those out, brought them in, and they assembled um, portraits of people they thought were significant out of actually found objects. I think they did a brilliant job. Mm -hmm. So I would like to say personally thank you for giving us an opportunity to show the works here in Town Hall. It means a lot to me and to the students <coughs> because um, I think it's important that we, you know, put this creativity on display. It shouldn't be just hidden away. Absolutely. So I'm going to thank uh, Victoria Brettenbach, Melanie LeBlanc, and I hope I don't butcher anyone's name, Emma Fife, Emily Shatford, Ethan Hawkins, Shyler Vandervet, uh, Jaden Peltier, Jack Gabor, Ryan Silva, Sydney Alexander, Theodore Collins, Devin Thibodeau, and Marissa Giamarco. And Thank thanks you. Again. Thank you very much for, for doing that. Let's give them a round of applause. I do. Thank you. Certificates uh, for each of the students, but I wanted to thank you very much for working together with the students and having the class select the artists. That's um, wonderful, and they are so wonderful just putting them in uh, Town Hall, and we hope that we can continue to do this Absolutely. to ensure that uh, artwork from the community is displayed here at Pelham Town Hall. I'd ask the Deputy Mayor perhaps to, uh, to assist me. We have some certificates, and we're going to come down there. So Melanie, Melanie's not here. Make sure you get that. Ryan? Jack? Jaden. All right, perfect. <laughs> Which one? Which one was? Which, which one's, one's yours? yours? Mine's the one over there. The little firefly yeah, guy. Oh, awesome! You can say that one more time. <laughs> Photo? Yep. <laughs> okay. Oh, Wait, put it in front of you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Alright, one, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. It is beautiful. Thank you. And what about Sydney? No. Sydney. No. <laughs> she was. Yeah. That's okay. Theodore. Yes. All right, Theodore. Let's give him a round of applause. Is yours in the room as well? Uh, not in this room. Not in this room? Okay, okay well, I know that um, Ms. Van Ravensway will escort you to the committee room, uh, and you can see it if it's there, and take your parents there and, and show you that as well. But thank you very much for, you. for sharing your artwork with us. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Yeah, Congratulations. Oh, yeah, stay with the big, big wigs. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great work. What about Victoria? Yes. All right, Victoria. I don't know. <laughs> we don't know either, but it's, it's, it's outside. They're also in the lobby and in this uh, committee. Room. Congratulations. Congratulations. Emma? Emily? Yes. <laughs> Not in this room. Okay. okay. <laughs> All the best pieces are out in the public hall. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can interject to 
save time. Uh, we only have one remaining student. And okay. Correct me if I'm not correct. And that would be Marissa Giamar. Okay, Marissa. Marissa. <laughs> Certificate. Now yours is uh, Turling, right? That's right here. Right there. That's okay. Really That's it's wonderful, and we've been Beautiful. we've been looking at it here. It's been it's been in the council chamber for a week or so. Okay. Thank you. So you're a grade eleven student, and uh, you just did you do that? You picked everything out from the from the drawer and made it. That's that's wonderful. Incredible. Thank you so much. It's so beautiful. Thank you very much. Let's give her a round of applause. So Sherry, I'll present, give this yes, to you and you perhaps can give them to the okay. students. Thank you. thank you. On behalf of Council, I just want to say thank you very much for letting us have your artwork and sharing it in, with the community. They, they are available here in the, in the chamber, also in the uh, exterior, in the uh, area there, and also in the committee room. But it, it really showcases your work and brings the community and our high, our high school and also uh, kind of the civic portion of our community together so thank you very much and I hope that there'll be other opportunities in our new Pelham Community Center where we can display lots of art from the community I think that's so important and, and with the master plan that we have for culture this is one of the uh, the things that we're supposed to be doing and we want to do more of so thank you so much we really appreciate it thank you Ms. Van Ravensway is going to be uh, showing you that committee room if some of your artworks there thanks again Okay, welcome. Thank you. Now we move to delegations. We have a few this evening. The first one is uh, some councillor colleagues from the township of West Lincoln. We have Mike Reiner and uh, Joanne Chichuk who are here. Thank you very much. And here's the podium. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, staff, and members of the community. Thank you very much for allowing Councillor Rayner and myself to be here with you tonight to talk about what we think is a very important issue to the Township of West Lincoln, but more so in the role of looking at governance, it is important to all communities within the, within the region of Niagara. <clears throat> Pardon me. The process that West Lincoln is embarking upon is not just about more governance. In fact, it is not about more governance, but rather it's about looking at how we provide appropriate services to our community and in doing so make a commitment to to uh, looking after governance in the future after the next election. Recently Mr. Uh, Mayor Joyner, our mayor, asked at Regional Council <coughs> to add a regional representative. He did that as a directive that was unanimously supported at our council. We are asking that you help by providing your approval to this ask tonight <laughs> and that you allow West Lincoln, you allow your voice and vote to go to, allow, to giving us an additional representative for the ensuing term of council starting 2018. Township of West Lincoln will be facing a tremendous amount of growth from the 2018-2022 term. That's a tough thing to say. Um, Supposedly, our growth in West Lincoln will continue right through to 2041, as is your own, et cetera. We are one of the very few municipalities that, that don't have two representatives. Our growth through 2031 is expected to go to 29,000, and we look, we're looking to 10,000 new jobs. The fact that we're growing and the fact that we've turned our mind to how we will grow and that we will, in fact, not burden our colleagues, but look at transportation and at our municipalities, say this is the appropriate way to group, grow. We will be very involved in economic development, planning and development, water and sewer infrastructure, as well as the building of roads and, and the creation of a complete and sustainable community. That would certainly be helped by another pair of eyes on our council, being able to share the job of committee work at the region as well as council. 
the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce has indicated that a complete review should be undertaken. And we, as a council, agree with that. It's too late for that to happen for the 2018 election, but the leadership, if leadership is required, West Lincoln certainly will be standing up to say that we agree that that be done in time so that the 2022 election is done after a complete review of governance, size, structure, and, and method of election is reviewed by the, re by the region. <clears throat> I don't, I, I, we also want to make a point that says that there is no need for you to delay the appointment of an additional councillor to West Lincoln. Uh, the fact that we are of the media, well, shall we say the smaller size, but in, in same size as many of our colleagues, uh, the province has given, given us the nod, the region has given us the nod, and that's why we come to you tonight to just say, if you will provide us with a nod, the governance review cannot happen now for the region. So giving us the additional councillor for this one term with explicit direction to in fact undertake governance review, we can't hold future councils to that, but we would certainly implore the following council, the next council at West Lincoln as well as yourselves and all others throughout the region <coughs> to take that step and to encourage future councils to make that. The Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce stated in a, in a quote that was recently released in the paper that we understand Mayor Joyner's request to add a regional councillor to help him represent his constituency at regional council. And we note that to do so would bring West Lincoln's representation in line with what would be expected given the relative size of their population as compared to other municipalities. In short, adding an elected rep representative for West Lincoln <clears throat> pardon me, equals better, equals better governance because it provides what I have just said, another set of eyes and <coughs> another, another pair of hands to do the work that are solely carried by our mayor at this point. Just a moment, please. Um, please. I? No. No. Um, perhaps someone, Mr. McDonald, <coughs> sorry, there's, can you ask them to maybe just... It, 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 I can hear now. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'll sorry. try to speak louder. I'm sorry. Uh, the mayors from Thorold, Lincoln, Grimsby, Port Colborne, Niagara-on-the-Lake, Pelham, and Fort Erie should not have difficulty with an additional regional council, councillor being about elected from the township of West Lincoln as <coughs> they too share that burden with uh, the burden of, of review and, and committee work with an, addi an additional member with, from their own councils. So what we're looking for is simply for that same offering and and then for regional council to take it under their advisement and deal with it in the next term of council. Um, as the G uh, Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce letter also states, West Lincoln is right to explore governance structure and the best supports the ambitious goals of this council and the council of West Lincoln. Councillors, mm -hmm. uh, members of council and Mr. Mayor, at this time we ask for your help and cooperation and helping in, in West Lincoln getting the additional counselor. So there's not much more to say but to ask you to, to say to you all, have a wonderful holiday season, enjoy your time off, uh, ponder this request but hopefully you'll, you'll see it's resolved in, in a way that is satisfactory to all of us and uh, if there's any questions I'm happy to answer those. All right, thank you very much counselor. <coughs> uh, members of here. Pelham Council have any questions for Councillor Chichuk? Councilor Ribiak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you uh, for the presentation. <clears throat> Just a quick question. Um, the interest in an additional representative on regional council is based on, I'm, I'm gathering from your presentation, on an understanding of the way in which regional council functions today and the degree of involvement of its regional councillors in the definition of its work as it exists today. I'm, I, I think I'm right in that, am I not? That's correct, but I'd have to add on to that the fact that with the Township of West Lincoln's uh, involvement, uh, major now in any of the planning studies that are being undertaken, the, the places to grow, well, pardon me, the, uh, this current study about the urban boundaries, the idea of servicing, and the solutions we have to, the decisions we have to make that are largely 
uh, started by the region say that our voice needs to be at the region about the options that are being undertaken on the master planning of transportation servicing as well as as well as any of the other regional services because it will have an impact on how we grow and the options we take on how we grow and those decisions will be made before that the next term of council is done. So having an additional person there to attend to some of these meetings would be advantageous for the township. Thank you. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I think that what that, 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 that means is that as West Lincoln grows, the current processes of regional council would require the involvement of more, more representation than just the mayor on regional council. I think that's... I believe that today, because today, of yes. the point, the point that we're at, and the fact that we are undergoing such studies about <coughs> pertaining to growth, cascading from the province, demanded by the province to, uh, and the the population numbers, the employment numbers, all given to the region and the region to the municipalities, we are going to grow. But today, the number of the number of committees at the region is very difficult for one member of our council to attend. And, and because we are going to grow, we should be involved in all of the committees that will actually have input and or their master plans reviewed in the next few years. So for that reason, it's a very difficult task for one person to be on every committee to have voice for the Township of West Lincoln, for West Niagara, and, and for, our, for the community as it grows. But without growth, the fact that we need to be involved without large growth, but just the fact that we are a municipality. Our involvement with all of these different committees is becoming burdensome to, to one representative. And many, most of the other communities in West in Niagara are, uh, tried to make us a region, uh, in Niagara are in fact benefited by having a second regional councillor already. So what we're saying is give it to, don't disagree with the move to put an extra councillor on, um, how the region decides to look at regional council and to determine the appropriate resizing uh, where it would be less than 32 but not six uh, is something that needs to be undertaken in the next term of council and double direct all of those decisions, all of that discussion. It's not part of our okay. decision. Thank, thanks very much. Thank Councilor you. Durling. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you. I'm going to build perhaps upon some of the things that you're going to say because some of the things that you have already said are on my mind and I, I think are very important. The problem with regional government, according to many folks who care to discuss this matter, and believe me, many have come to me to discuss this, and oddly <coughs> enough, local people have gone to the upper tier municipality or regional councillors to talk about Pelham business. A lot of Pelham people are talking to me about regional business, believe it or not. Not the number of bodies around the table at regional council, but rather the attitude and direction members are displaying. President Obama, or past President Obama, stated there's a time to campaign and a time to govern. Wise elected officials realize the difference. People say that some at regional council don't really know the difference. I have a question, Council. I don't have a question, or just a comment, sir. Can we will be debating the matter. Okay, uh, the so comments I, later. I Thank you. I thought you had a question. I no, apologize. I didn't. Sorry. Okay. Comments. Anyone with questions, and then we will be debating the matter. And I think Council Rubiak had a perhaps a leading question, so we'll get into that debate later on. Thank you very much Thank for the presentation. Appreciate it. It's been uh, moved by Councillor Lane, seconded by Councillor Papp. Be it resolved that Council for the Town of Pelham receive the delegation information presented by the Township of West Lincoln as it relates to a change in the region of Niagara <coughs> Council composition. I'll call the question on that. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. And now, we do have the motion, and it has been uh, put forward by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor Ribiak. Be it resolved, the Council receive... Oh, that's not it. Oh, so I haven't them yet. I'm sorry. Sorry, I thought it was immediately falling. It, it wasn't. It was uh, thank you. And the mo... So... It's on the consent agenda, so I'll just point it to you. So that has been moved... By, thank you. There. Thank you. So it was 961. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So that's been moved by Councillor Ribiak, second by Councillor Durley. Uh, be it resolved, the Council of the Town of Pelham uh, consents to the passage of bylaw number 
108 of the Regional Municipality of Niagara being a bylaw to increase the composition of Regional Council by adding an additional councillor to the Township of West Lincoln. I'm going to turn to Councillor Durley because I cut you off and then perhaps back to Councillor Ribiak as the uh, the seconder or mover, Councillor Durley. Thank you. I'll start over, but first, <laughs> quickly. The problem with regional government, according to many folks who care to discuss this matter, is not the number of bodies around the table, rather the attitude and direction some members are displaying. Past President Obama stated there is a time to campaign and a time to govern. Wise elected officials realize the difference. Some at regional council don't realize this difference. If, in fact, being a mayor and a regional council is too much work for one individual, as many have stated many times, perhaps the makeup of regional councils should not include mayors. Perhaps they should all be regional councillors. Just something for them to think about uh, as it comes through and building upon the presentation that was given to us uh, should be considered early next term. I cannot speak against the request of West Lincoln for an additional regional council other than it will increase the cost, but if you know the cost of everything, sometimes you don't know the value of anything and the value may far exceed the costs. Perhaps the person that can uh, be elected to that position, he could be the voice that begins the quest to define the, the duties, responsibilities, attitude, discipline, and direction of regional council so that it can practice the leadership it was designed to deliver. I certainly will support the motion. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Ribiak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I, uh, despite having having moved it, apparently, uh, I will not be supporting the uh, uh, the motion. And I have a number of reasons for for taking that position, and I don't mind getting into into a lot of them, and maybe we will as this discussion proceeds. But in in brief, I, I believe that this move is is taking the region in the wrong direction. In uh, preparing for this, I took a look at uh, the regional the, the the region's website to come to understand how it is that they view their place in in the world. A little bit about the history of, of how region regional municipalities came to exist, how they're essentially a replacement for the old county system, which disappeared, and that counties um, had uh, had 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 some some purpose around the unincorporated bits of land in between the the municipalities that existed as small, isolated uh, units as they then were. The, today, of course, our area municipalities are all contiguous with one another. There is no unincorporated land, and regional uh, the regional municipality's role then turns into one of coordinating and managing common areas of interest. The things that area municipalities uh, feel would be more efficiently done centrally as opposed to individually. So we see things like garbage collection, or the health uh, system, uh, regional policing, uh, that sort of thing. But essentially, uh, the direction of, of the region is set by its area municipalities and the aspirations and goals of the, the different municipalities that exist. And in fact, that's what needs to be uh, communicated to, uh, to regional council so that regional council can do its best job in terms of making sure that, that, that roads connect to one another as they cross boundaries or parks connect with one another and that uh, overall policies uh, can be um, uh, can can be um, uh, created but always for the purpose of of ensuring that the area municipalities themselves their goals and aspirations are the ones that come to the fore so to me um, when, when when this this review uh, of, of regional government comes about this this review of governance comes about um, I, I'm not at all certain that it won't, won't be an, an outcome that a conclusion is arrived at that, in fact, the regional council should be made up essentially of, of, of mayors. And if there needs to be more, certainly not more, uh, not such a number that, that, that mayors would be, would, would be in the minority as they currently are, because the purpose of regional council is to put forward the, the, um, the um, direction that area municipalities want to go. So in point of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that going one more under regional council meets that requirement. I'd, I'd be looking at a number less in order to achieve a number that, that allows the area municipalities to have a much greater level of influence in uh, regional council than, than, than exists currently. I do understand and, and, and sympathize with um, the burden that's placed on, on a mayor having to, uh, to attend to 
the many, many committees that the Regional Council has created. My view is that if the burden is too great, the burden ought to be lightened, that not every councillor needs to be involved in every committee. I think of the NPCA as, as an example. There's no reason that, 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 that regional councillors need to be in their, you know, populating that committee in its entirety. It was well within their purview to select individuals from the community to represent on that. That would certainly have reduced the burden and, and maybe would have produced a, a different kind of result within the NPCA. So if, if the burden is too great, that's only because it's currently constituted that way and the way it's currently constituted may not make the best possible sense, and that may be an outcome of the uh, review of governance. So I don't think that adding one more position is, is actually the way to go. I'd rather see the direction go the other way. So on that principle alone, I, I, I can't be supportive of adding one more number to it. Those are, are my thoughts now, and if we need to talk about some more things, we can do that. Okay, too. thank you very much, Councillor. Other members of Council? Councillor Lane. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ribiak, for that. Uh, I also will not be supporting this. Um, in all my time in the community, uh, since Regional Council was inceptions, uh, I have not yet heard of somebody telling me, let's make it bigger. Uh, I don't think bigger in this case is better. Okay, I think there are ways around uh, managing a person's time and uh, duties and what have you, <coughs> but increasing uh, the regional complement, uh, especially at this time with all the things that are negative around the region, uh, I just don't think uh, it's, uh, it's the way to go, and uh, I will not be supporting the motion. Okay, thank you. Others? Councillor Papp? <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Ribiak and Councillor Lane. I'll uh, as well not be supporting this resolution. Having spent 40 years in municipal government, both as a staff person and a politically now 15 years, uh, the issue is plain and simple, that the governance review of the region has to happen. It has to happen. Uh, I respect and understand the volume of work that's undertaken at the regional government level, because I used to be worked for two regional governments. And for councillors to take on that type of work, it is just undaunting. Nonetheless, it's about good governance, good leadership, and how you work through this. I think the timing of this is just a little premature. I would rather see us go through that a full-fledged, and believe me, I've been through a number of reviews of regional government. Uh, the one that I previously worked at actually collapsed into the city of Hamilton. And there was lots of emancipations of what should or should not happen. Essentially, it does work and it takes time. Right now, we should just step back and ask ourselves, you know, how well can we improve our relationships both at the lower tier and the upper tier, and in fact, lower the burden, not just on the, the, uh, the work of those in West Lincoln or us here, but across the board. Because I know many of them are just, it's beyond their capacity. It's just, it's just so complicated, so many different things. So uh, I respect and understand the request, but at this point, I'd say, no, I cannot support this. I would rather see, uh, instead of just numbers, a complete comprehensive review of region of Niagara into a, a workable, uh, how can I say, uh, compatible type of uh, governing organization, whatever that may look like. Thank you. Thank you. Others? Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Originally, uh, my thought was to bring forward a motion to amend the, meet, the, uh, the motion uh, making our support contingent upon the region committing to a comprehensive uh, governance review. But uh, given the arguments of my colleagues around the table, and I truly do believe that, that we may be putting the cart before the horse, uh, I believe a comprehensive uh, governance review is probably first and foremost. And out of that, a structure of uh, a new regional governance uh, uh, will emerge. So I also will not be supporting this motion, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Councillor King. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I also will not be supporting this. Um, I would like to see the review of uh, regional council governance and its mandate. Um, I sympathize and empathize with West Lincoln and uh, the burden that they bear, but I 
also think that the the uh, cart is before the horse and we need that review first before adding to the problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now my comments. Um, I did speak against the motion at uh, Regional Council um, for many of the same reasons that Council colleagues around this table have suggested. The, um, the, the it, it does upset quite significantly the um, the way the smaller communities and the larger communities um, and, and having 17 from the smaller and 14 from the larger, this doesn't kind of make sense. That's one part of it. The other part is that the governance review is desperately needed. Uh, we've seen that. And I think the interactions that we've had with the region, or maybe it should be the other way around, some of the interactions the region's tried to have with us indicates that there's a, a disconnect in the feeling of what the role of regional council is. And I think it's closer, a lot closer, to what Council Ribiak says than what others perhaps sitting around the regional council table think that they can tell local municipalities and, and, and enter into our sphere of jurisdiction. Having said that, I do sympathize with West Lincoln and the mayor. The mayor is an uh, extremely hard worker. Um, he does sit on a number of committees, and, and so this is not a, a personal a, against the mayor or the council. The mayor is a, a chair or a co-chair of a committee, so the council can say, maybe Mr. Mayor, you step off that and give more time to the, to the municipality. He does also serve on the conservation authority and maybe Maybe a town councillor could serve on that, or a, as Councillor Ribiak indicated, a member of the public could serve on the NPCA. And, and maybe the West Lincoln Council could ask the mayor to do that. I serve on all of the standing committees at the region. Councillor Beatty serves on a, a couple of them as well. Um, but I serve on all four, and I serve on a number of other committees. It is a lot of work but I think it's important uh, to be involved uh, at the region, at all of those committees. So I think on balance, I agree with the, with the, what the majority appears to be saying this evening, that this is the wrong direction for the region to go in, that a complete overhaul is needed, that when folks talk to us about it, they don't say add people, they say rethink it and maybe reduce it. And so I will not be supporting the motion either. Unless there's someone else that would like to comment. I will call the question then. Councillor Durley? Recorded vote, please. Okay, thank you. Madam Clerk, can you uh, undertake the recorded vote? Members of Council, the vote is on uh, item 9.6.1, which was moved on the agenda. Be it resolved that the Municipal Council of the Town of Pelham consents to the passage of bylaw number 2017-108 of the Regional Municipality of Niagara being a bylaw to increase the composition of Regional Council by adding an addition of Councillor for the Township of West Lincoln. I will call for the votes in alphabetical order. Yay is in support, nay is not supporting the motion. Councillor Kersey. Against. Councillor Durley. In favour. Councillor King. Against. Councillor Lane. Nay. <coughs> Councillor Papp. Nay. Councillor Ribiak. Nay. Mayor Augustine. Opposed. The motion is lost. Thank you very much. Next. The motion is uh, defeated. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, uh, council colleagues from the township. We appreciate you coming out this evening and explaining the, the, the rationale. I know that this is going to other councils and men, uh, you know, others have supported it and there's another, others that are uh, talking about it tonight and tomorrow. So. Um, we look forward to hearing the result. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you so Take much care. for your consideration. Thank you. Take care. Happy holidays.
Now we move to our next delegation, which is the Town of Pelham Library Board. And members of the Library Board have been uh, very patient here. Thank you very much as we reordered the agenda. I see our chair of the board. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, if you can also uh, introduce other members of the board and mm -hmm. staff. Uh, first of all, I would uh, ask Kirk Weaver, uh, <coughs> CEO of the uh, library, to join me to help with the computer, uh, of course. An, an essential uh, uh, assistance for me. Uh, Mayor Dave, uh, councillors, um, staff, and uh, members of the community, uh, we are pleased to be here uh, this evening to uh, be able to present the um, proposal for uh, municipal funding uh, request for the 2018 library budget, and we appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, we will be presenting uh, information on both the operating budget and a capital ask uh, for the coming year, but uh, before getting into those um, specifics, uh, I would like to uh, <coughs> go through some information on uh, what is happening at the library and where we, where we see things going. Uh, you'll recall that I presented to council uh, in June uh, about uh, goings on at the library and uh, this is very much a, an update. Uh, things that we've been involved over the, the past year and in the coming year is the Maple Lake reopening, which I'll have further comments. Uh, we've been doing planning on renovations in the Font Hill branch of the library. Uh, we've implemented our strategic plan, which was completed last year and approved uh, uh, early on in this year. Uh, we've established a uh, partnership with the Rotary Club of Font Hill to participate in the Pelham Community Center uh, with a project to supply uh, resources. Uh, we've launched a online service, enhance the online capabilities within the library and the uh, link partnership uh, previously referred to as the Evergreen Project uh, is a uh, cooperative venture between libraries uh, uh, within Niagara and that is going well and uh, we are looking forward to expansions in that, uh, um, in that project. <coughs> um, in terms of other parts of the update, uh, we have both of our branches serving very much as hubs in our community. We're not just a uh, repository for, uh, for books uh, or uh, information. We are very much uh, pr having participation in many activities uh, within the community. It's used for all sorts of groups within the community, uh, ranging in ages uh, throughout the age spectrum. And we are extremely busy in terms of the space that we use uh, within both our branches. Um, visitors to our libraries are up 6% in the, the year 2017. Uh, we have a large cadre of volunteers uh, who provide assistance uh, to the library throughout the year in a wider range of, uh, of activities which are extremely helpful uh, to the library. Uh, we've been trying our best to expand community outreach and uh, are being making ourselves present at uh, community events such as the Green Streets Challenge. Uh, Summerfest and uh, Thursdays at the Peace Park where we're uh, providing assistance to the public as well as making our presence felt. Uh, and we have many uh, children's and adult programs which is, has uh, tremendous attendance which you can see 5,651 participants so far through the year. And I'd like to make some uh, specific comments on Maple Acre. It's been our big project over the past couple of years. We opened to the public on January 24th. Uh, it is now open for 32 hours per week, uh, which is uh, uh, higher than it has been in the past, and we are seeing great success uh, because of the uh, hours that we're providing. There have been 142 new um, library membership cards issued through uh, Maple Acre in the Fenwick area. Uh, we've had over 23,000 visitors uh, to the end of October, which is multiple times the number of visitors that that branch has had in the past. Uh, and uh, universally, the feedback that we have been getting on the Maple Acre uh, branch, the way it's been, uh, I, I guess its design and its, uh, its utilization is, uh, has been positive. And I'd just like to emphasize um, the success that the decisions made by uh, <clears throat> this council to invest in capital and to invest in operating funds, the impact, the positive impact that it has on our community in terms of access to activities and information. It's been a tremendous success. Uh, getting to the specifics of the budget request, um, 
we are asking for um, salary and benefits uh, increases to the budget of uh, 42,000 point five uh, forty two point five thousand uh, dollars uh, ten thousand dollars worth of wage adjustments statutory benefits and minimum wage impact uh, a small increase in our collections costs uh, a small increase in our overall operations uh, expenses uh, and utilities for a total increase of around forty or forty five thousand dollars the outstanding figure there is the statutory benefits, and I think it's important for council to understand what that is. And I'd ask uh, Kirk to provide some details on what constitutes that one element of uh, the ask. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Uh, through the mayor, so so briefly, <coughs> the um, through the through the discussions with town staff, the HR director, and the and the uh, treasurer, we've um, gone through uh, some of the uh, benefits that, um, that were. Not budgeted for in the past. We have two two staff became eligible through uh, the number of hours they worked for Omers and chose to enroll. So uh, that's an impact. It's existing staff. Uh, we now have to pay that that portion of, of the uh, the Omers benefits. And there were two uh, additional staff that um, uh, were budgeted at single fa single rate and are now, but they're they're uh, at a family rate. So we need to the, um, account for the differential there. Uh, and that's that's essentially the bulk of the difference in statutory benefits, in, in addition to any increases in the overall benefits costs. Um, in terms of benefits, we provide um, the basic. Uh, there's no health and dental benefits for our part-time staff, but for our full full-time staff, they are on the same plan that uh, the town has. So that's that's an overview of the uh, <coughs> statutory benefits piece and, and why the impact is so um, so so large in 2018. Uh, it's a result of a review we've, we've undertaken with, with the town to make sure that we've got everything uh, reconciled. Okay, thank and you. And I think it's important to un understand that component of, of the ask in that uh, when you look at the, the list of uh, uh, increases in the budget, um, we, they, they really are minor in almost all categories. There is no increase in hours. Uh, we are trying, doing our best to offer a dynamic uh, um, uh, useful uh, service which we're getting terrific feedback on and basically asking for very uh, little in the way of an increase uh, to help us sustain that, uh, that approach that we're using. And uh, just some more details uh, on, the, uh, on the budget, the overall costing uh, in terms of staffing costs, materials and so on for a total operating expenditure uh, request of $965,000. Um, and in terms of re the revenue side of the equation, uh, to support that, we're asking for the increase in the municipal grant of $46,500. Uh, we anticipate that our um, revenue generation will continue to grow. Uh, the uh, available space within uh, Maple Acre is helping enhance uh, uh, revenues for um, community projects and community meetings and various things like that. Um, the capital ask will also have an effect on that down the road. Um, we're anticipating no changes in provincial operating grant. Uh, and we, as I mentioned, we will continue to uh, search out other revenue uh, raising opportunities. And there's a quick uh, look at the operating revenue budget uh, balancing out to $965,000 in revenues. Hopefully to cover the nine hundred sixty-five thousand dollars in uh, in costs. Mm -hmm. So that is the operating ask that we have this year. The second part of the ask is the uh, the capital part. And you recall in last year's presentation uh, we had a uh, ask a proposal for uh, a renovating budget for the Font Hill branch of the uh, the library. And uh, for a number of reasons uh, that uh, project uh, didn't receive approvals and uh, hasn't moved forward to uh, a building stage. Uh, so we have done some work on that this, uh, this current year in terms of uh, doing further planning on that project. So we have more detailed information on, uh, on the aspects of it and the cost for it and the timing and various things like that. Uh, <clears throat> so the project uh, we are hoping to still be able to move along uh, for a number of important factors. Um, the factors really relate to two different things. The, what has happened in the 30 years that that library has been in operation and what we anticipate happening in the next 20 years. Uh, because really the proposal we're looking at is, uh, is meant to cover 
a long period of time. It's not just a, a short-term fix uh, for issues, uh, but in terms of past history, the facility opened <coughs> in 1987. Uh, there has been no significant renovation since that time. Uh, current public uh, spaces are becoming very cramped. Um, uh, the way the library does business has changed dramatically over that period of time. The services that we offer uh, are much larger and much more comprehensive than uh, what would have uh, been available um, at the time of opening, plus the fact that Font Hill has grown by a significant amount uh, over that period of time. So what the library is doing and the people that the library is serve, serving have grown uh, dramatically over 30, uh, 30 years. And it's starting to show up in terms of uh, what happens within the library and just a series of pictures here in terms of what various aspects look like, uh, looks like my uh, <coughs> bedroom at various times uh, uh, when I haven't picked up, but uh, you can see that uh, things are getting cramped within the existing facility within Font Hill. Uh, the, the opportunity we have is that uh, with Maple Acre having uh, uh, been expanded and with the Historical Society moving to Maple, Maple Acre, uh, space has been freed up uh, in the basement of the, the library. Uh, there is some staff work being done down there, but there's the opportunity for having uh, much more of the staff support, the administrative aspects uh, of the library's work to be uh, done uh, off the main floor in, into the basement. So the, the basics, basis of the proposal that we're, we have is that uh, we'll utilize space down in the basement for things that are currently taking up space on the main floor. And on the main floor, we'll free up space to have for the public, uh, which is really as it should be. Um, <clears throat> things that are uh, pushing us into the future is that uh, the expected population growth, growth of Pelham uh, over the uh, uh, next uh, many years, uh, looking in the short term, uh, a growth uh, up to 21,000 by the year 2031. Uh, the, the commerce within the community is growing. Uh, these are things I'm sure you all know. Uh, the community center is uh, uh, opening, which will increase traffic and volume in the, the area of the library. Uh, the residential component of the town, and specifically the area uh, close to the library, is expected to grow. So we're expecting increasing pressures on the space that I just showed you the pictures of. So uh, we see it as a, a situation that's not going to be static. It's, it's going to be, continue to deteriorate. Uh, so we see timing as not being critical today, but certainly being crucial uh, over the next uh, uh, short-term period of two or three years. Uh, the planning that we have uh, thus far estimates a cost of $306,000 uh, for the project. It, it will renovate the main floor sections to make more effective use for the public. Uh, the basement upgrades uh, uh, will bring it to a, adequate standards. The Disabilities Act requires a passenger lift uh, for that part of the um, uh, facility. And uh, the passenger lift has been talked about before at this council and has been put into your planning budget uh, for down the road at a figure of $100,000. And that $100,000 is part of that $306,000. So you've already identified and approved and uh, uh, a significant portion of the, the uh, $306,000. Um, the increase in total usable space will be approximately 1,400 square feet. Um, and uh, the ask of the $306,000 is $216,000 uh, from the municipality. And as I said, $100,000 of that has already been identified, approved, and committed uh, uh, by the town. That's a repetition of what I just said. Uh, uh, the library contribution of $90,000 we have identified... Uh, $60,000 in reserves and $30,000 in charitable accounts. And we have begun discussions as to how we can raise additional funds to help uh, support the project to make sure that, uh, that we continue to have adequate reserve funds uh, within the library for any special issues that might come, come at us down the road. Uh, but that's how we see the project being uh, funded is through the municipal ask and the $90,000 uh, uh, contribution from the library. Uh, as I said, timing can be flexible. It doesn't have to be next week, uh, but uh, uh, certainly it could be a, a two-year fiscal project, uh, certainly from our uh, point of view. 
and our other capital uh, asks for the coming year are fairly uh, insignificant, so that shouldn't uh, pressure us that much. And in summary, uh, we have a library that has uh, been working hard to change its focus, make itself more of a community um, uh, a hub within the community, a community resource uh, for the population throughout the town. Uh, and we think we have been very successful at that over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, we're growing our service to uh, meet community needs as they're being identified for us. And uh, we have uh, submitted what we consider a very conservative uh, request for funding. And as I pointed out, a uh, very little increase uh, in most of our operating expenses to support what we see as a very dynamic uh, approach to providing service and uh, a request for a capital investment, which we see as being crucial for the future to be able to offer good service to the uh, population of uh, all of Pelham and uh, specifically <coughs> the Portville area. We'd be happy to answer questions. Oh, great. Thank you very much for your comprehensive report uh, and presentation. Questions to Mr. Wright or Mr. Weaver? Um, I don't know if Councillor Kersey wants to, as our representative on the board, I don't know if you want to say anything at this point. I know we'll look to you a little bit as we get into it in the budget process, uh, or do, would you just want colleagues to ask questions? I think uh, let's hear from colleagues questions. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ribiak, start us off on some of those questions, and then Councillor King. Th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a couple of questions for clarification. Um, sm small number, but, but I'm curious about it. The minimum wage impact. Do we have people on minimum wage working there, or is there... There's some other mechanism by which that minimum wage change uh, through through the mayor. Yes, we do. Our, our student pages um, are at a minimum wage, uh, and we have three of them, and they work approximately ten hours a week <coughs> through the whole year. Throughout the year, yes. Yeah. Thank you. And the other the other question I had, um, you have a very successful uh, record with regard to programs and the number of people attending them. Is there is there any revenue generation through that? Is is that is that part of the fees and uh, and, and other items there? Uh, through through the mayor, yes, the, the revenue uh, adult programming in particular. <coughs> there there's uh, fees that um, uh, we, we structure it in such a way. In most cases, where uh, if we have an outside presenter, we split the revenues 50-50 with the outside presenter, so that uh, the library makes money that way. Uh, children's programming is more. A materials cost. We want to encourage illiteracy, uh, but the adult pro programming is an area where we do um, receive fees, and we have a, some very popular programs that are generating significant revenue at the moment. Um, and whenever you see their parking lot full, it's probably one of those programs. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, Councillor King. Mm -hmm. uh, through you, Mr. May Mayor, to um, Mr. Weaver. I too have a question with regards to the minimum wage increase. Um, and the part-time staff and my question is related to the um, benefit portion in terms of extended health um, dental etc are the changes in the minimum wage and the related information surrounding that um, is it applicable to those part-time staff is there a certain number of hours that those part-time staff work that then they will be entitled to those benefits, which will significantly impact um, the operating cost? Not, uh, not our student pages. Um, our part-time staff um, that work anywhere from 20 to 28 hours, there is an hours threshold that they, once they work that, uh, those number of hours over a consecutive period of time, mm -hmm. um, they would become eligible. Uh, and that is that's the impact that we're we're facing uh, with two staff. There are no further staff uh, that we have currently that aren't eligible that haven't enrolled. Okay, thank you. So unless we hired a new staff member um, and they worked those number of hours, we wouldn't have that impact. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any others? Mm -hmm. uh, so, sorry, Councilor Papp, did you say something you wanted to ask? I thought you did. A sorry. couple of quick. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Um, when you're referring to the statutory benefits, what exactly are we referring to? Twenty-eight thousand dollars through you. So, the there's four full-time staff who will receive the health and dental package, the same health and dental package that the the town uh, staff get. There was there are two of them <coughs> that are uh, now uh, enrolled in the family rate uh, as opposed to the single rate. So the the impact is the difference there. And then there were two 
part-time staff who became eligible for OMERS benefits but based on the number of hours they've worked. So we need to pay the, the employer portion of those benefits. Okay, um, I guess that's the, I was trying to sort out is that the OMERS I understand. Um, what I'm not understanding is that the other benefits are really part of the municipal benefits package, is it not? So it's not statutory. We don't have to do that unless I'm mistaken. Are you able to help the counselor? Well, okay, so it's it's, stat it's statutory in that we're they're enrolled in the plan and we are part of the, the same You're plan. You're enrolled in our plan? Yes. Okay, so the idea is to roll them up as part of the overall package. Is that correct? Okay, I've got it now. Statutory through me, I thought, okay, well, you know, some provincial guidance and that, but okay, all right. I've got it. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, who makes the decision to have these part-time people work that number of hours that brings them to an eligibility status? Are you able to? <laughs> through, through, um, through the mayor. That's, it's part of our ongoing staffing complement. Uh, we have a number of part-time staff. Uh, it, would, it would apply to full-time staff if we hired them full-time and they would, they would still be eligible for, for OMERS. So there's no difference whether it's part-time or uh, in terms of OMERS, part-time or full-time. Um, the difference and, the, and part of the reason we, we have part-time staff is um, and, and we, we don't enroll them then in the fuller uh, benefits package and we have greater flexibility uh, when, when our hours adjust uh, if they're on a part-time basis. Just for clarity through you, now they have worked part-time for a number of years perhaps yes and now they've just become eligible yes okay is it the number of years that they've worked that make them eligible uh, or is I, it the number I, of hours I, I believe it's the number of years and hours combined I think the HR director might be able to clarify that Ms. Gilbert if I may through you Mr. Mayor um, yes just to clarify as well we're not talking about health and dental benefits we're only talking about owners so just like yes. the town our library part-time staff do not qualify for health and dental benefits but owners, yes, once I believe it's two years of service and I don't know the exact number of hours they need to complete, makes them eligible for owners. So they can at that time opt to participate in owners and if they choose to, then part of their salary goes to owners and then that's when as the employer, we submit the employer portion as well. If they choose not to participate, there's no cost to the employer. I, re I recall some historical things that uh, concerned me in the past, but okay, I understand exactly what you're saying here. Okay. All right. Thank you. And OMERS is the pension plan for those that may not know. Um, anything else from councillors? In, question. In the past, especially as we were transitioning, as you were transitioning and you transitioned successfully to, uh, to the new Maple Lake Library, there are questions around this table, I think, last budget year about uh, is there a potential for increasing the use of, of volunteers? We didn't hear a lot about that because pro you're presenting a budget which is more numbers and the volunteers are priceless. Um, can you just maybe expand a little bit on that? How, how are we, have, have we been able to recruit some more volunteers? Uh, how are they involved in the operation? Uh, and then maybe answer that, that question, have they, can they help with some of the budget uh, and reduce that budget a little bit? Uh, through, through the mayor, the, um, we have a roster of about 145 volunteers. Uh, they do a lot, of, a lot of the work they do they, is around fundraising, so our book sales and clothing sales are almost completely run by volunteers. Uh, in terms of operations, uh, we have volunteers who look after exterior maintenance. The Pelham Garden Club looks after the, the flower beds here in Font Hill. Uh, and we have um, programming that is done by volunteers. So most recently we've started a tutoring program. Um, we have somebody who is, is, comes in and volunteers their time and tutors uh, students so we don't have a staff member or have to hire an outside service. <coughs> um, so we use volunteers in that way. In terms of um, replacing staff with volunteers, um, that's not something I think that we've, we've entertained in terms of um, having them check in and check out and replacing a paid professional staff who, who have undergone training and understand um, the researching and the reference mm. um, support that our, our patrons need. We haven't entertained uh, that at this time. So I'm not sure that we could be in a, in a position where we would be replacing our, our frontline staff with, with volunteers. It gets into a fairly tricky situation. We'd also get into privacy issues and, and uh, reliability issues and having people available to, to support uh, the level of service that, that we people have become accustomed to. But whenever new tasks come up, we certainly look to volunteers okay. um, to do that. 
And I think um, as a board, um, they're very cognizant of the fact of, of um, looking to minimize the impact on the property taxpayer, um, supporting it with volunteers where they can. And I think our, our staff have taken on more as volume has increased. They're taking okay. on more work. So we're, we're accommodating um, some of the growth in the town um, with, with an existing complement without having to look for additional staff. Okay. Thank you very much for the comprehensive answer. Appreciate that. If, if I might, before we finish, uh, I was remiss at the start in acknowledging we have two board members here okay. supporting us in our presentation. I didn't do that at the start, and I apologize to Joe Bouchard and Lisa Murray, who uh, provide moral support to Kirk and I in these presentations. All right. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate that, and appreciate the board members being here, and all the members of the board uh, and staff for their for their diligence and working <coughs> with our tremendous library, and always uh, always growing, <coughs> always expanding, and and uh, something's always there. Um, that's new. Anything else from members of council? So we will be dealing with this the committee. Um, so we'll we'll turn to uh, Councillor Kersey at that time, and he can help us through some of the some of the process. And I know I think in the past years when we've done this, Mr. Weaver has uh, has stayed right till the end. So uh, we appreciate that. Um, if you want, you're welcome to do that. So I do have a motion moved by Councillor Durley, second by Councillor Ribiak, be it resolved the Council receive the Town of Pelham Library Board 2018 budget presentation and that the information be referred for consideration during the budget deliberations, which is during committee. I'll call the question. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you very much, Mr. Weaver and Mr. Wright, for your presentation you and other board members. Thank you. Moving on the agenda, we have report from our regional <coughs> councillor. Councillor Beatty has been there in the back. Good evening, councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Wearing Mayor. a festive tie, thank you. Yes. In my many years in education, I think I got one a year. Um, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of staff, and members of the public, uh, the report before you are the, basically the summaries <laughs> of the last uh, standing four standing committee meetings and, uh, and council. I'd like to draw attention just to three items, but be willing to answer questions on others. Uh, the first bullet on public health. Um, we've had a very strong presentation a couple months ago from several women who came in to talk about the loved ones lost the op opioid crisis. It was a very emotional presentation and one that was taken very seriously by members of the Public Health Committee. There's a feeling on the part of some that we haven't acted strongly enough or quickly enough. <coughs> And I was quite impressed, the, the, uh, basically the Commissioner of Public Health, instead of talking about the various resources that are available re regarding the opioid crisis, brought in about 20 some individuals mm -hmm. and introduced them from the various organizations. And it's a case where, frankly, my opinion has changed significantly with the two presentations we've had. Uh, it's not a subset or a disadvantaged subset of the population. It's widespread. Uh, we did see, but we weren't, weren't able to publish a map uh, showing the ambulance calls. Uh, in particular because some of them were uh, under five numbers and in that case you could identify the indiv individual by community. So it's not located in only one community in Niagara, it's widespread. It's across the demographic, it's not just young people or street people or et cetera. Um, so it was rather in informative to see the introduction of those 20 some individuals in terms of the process. Uh, obviously it's something that's affecting uh, across the nation but uh, Niagara is not exempt from the, the opi opioid crisis. Um, Two items that should have been front page headlines had other events not taken place at Council. Uh, I'll point out to you Public Works, the Joint Memorandum of Understanding, an MOU for the Consolidated Transit Model of Niagara, passed unanimously by all three major municipalities who have transit systems and by the region. So it's not just an idea that's going to maybe happen someday. <coughs> In fact, it is moving forward. Uh, you'll notice as well just uh, uh, there's a very strong uh, attempt for this committee not to look like the region taking it over. It's basically unifying or linking up people. So we even changed the name of the committee to Linking Niagara Transit Committee. And for your information, I'm representing the, there for basically um, from the central portion to uh, Port Colburn. We've got uh, Mayor Redekop for the, the, that end of the jurisdiction, Tony Quirk for the west end, and uh, Chair Kaslin for the St. Catharines area. Plus there are members from the local community and transit committee. The talking is not just talking about the maybe. For example, there are 35 buses to be acquired by various transit authorities and they're looking at getting a common signage 
and basically uh, developing a logo for that new system uh, rolling out. So it's, it's coming along the road very well, and I'm looking for a very positive uh, transition into that as we pick we're getting ready for uh, the eventual GO, Go Train system uh, serving Niagara. So interconnecting those two systems. And the other thing that should have gained headline attention, I think, is it's for about the 10th year in a row, uh, we've brought in a budget uh, or budgets that were within the guidance, and the guidance being 2%. Uh, that was very difficult this year. This is the last year of any uploading uh, from the province. Uh, there was a significant multi-million dollar deficit from the police services budget, uh, but we were able to do some last minute trimming, et cetera, to getting it down to the 2% that we'd asked for as a cap at the beginning. So those are things I think that should be celebrated. And uh, I think everybody is ready for the end of this year, a relaxing time, and to you as well uh, for the holiday season and uh, for getting ready for 2018. Best wishes to you. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Beatty, for Answer your report. Any questions? Uh, do members of council have any questions for Councillor Beatty on any of those items? Uh, Councillor Papp? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Under the um, reports, bending the curve in Ontario Works caseload, what is that about? Okay. That's the term that they're using basically to try and <coughs> work, getting the case slowed down, getting more people employed actively, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, it surprised me. It was a learning thing. You would tend to think that if you've got a, a, a period of inflation and so on and economic turmoil that it would be a fairly soon turnaround. There's about a five-year lag, I'm told, in terms of the, the economy adjusting. And there's another report that basically was given here that was, I didn't mention, but it's a case where... Um, there was a report given talking about the growth, I believe it was in planning, and we had some very, very good news about the number of building permits, about the volume of increased growth, etc. We talk about the, the pending growth from now until 2041, but we now have significant concrete signs that that growth is beginning to take effect in a very positive way for all of Niagara. So it's basically to reduce the, the, the effective work caseload. Right, and I would just add to that, I think the, the, the issue has been um, that it hasn't been, I'll say, automated or elect, put, put electronically. And so it's really the regional staff have put together a computer system, a database, a way in which to work and try to, when leads come up for new jobs, they can fill them a lot easier than they used to in the old method. They've had to have some workarounds with some provincial uh, databases and, and things like that, but now they've they have that planning in order to do that. So um, we haven't actually seen the curve bending. It's sort of holding there. It's, uh, <coughs> but that's what the hope is that by um, putting in these this computer system and the way in which they can work, now that things have settled down with the provincial program, uh, actual computer program, that they can move that curve down. Good. And part of it was a survey done by employers the first time last year, mm -hmm. uh, looking at the number of employees that they have and what their needs are for training and future needs for growth, et cetera, trying to match the, the demographics that do exi exist on the ground. I think it was an 80-some percent uh, response rate to that particular survey. So that's basically the essence of it. Thank you. I guess okay, uh, thank you. the common concern is always that uh, it's not around the front page is what's our unemployment rate, what are the caseloads rising, are people finding work? And it's good to hear that people are moving off a system of social assistance mm -hmm. into self-dependence. And that's something that is uh, encouraging, particularly uh, as we grow, that hopefully that caseloads will be, uh, how can I say, brought into an adaptable, uh, how can I say, ha handled, handled better than current situations where people don't get hooked up. So the database system was always something that people couldn't get linked up. And now I'm happy to hear that they are doing that. Thank you. First, Thank you. First piece to the puzzle, quite clearly having a, a, a connected intermunicipal transit for all of Niagara mm -hmm. is to serve the needs of those mm -hmm. most, most uh, in need of getting to from their place of residence mm -hmm. to where the employment uh, resides. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? I do want to just uh, add, you, t you talked about the, uh, the budget. Um, and you alluded to the upload. I think that was a value of about one and a half percent. And the region is the, um, I'll say the regional budget is the beneficiary of that provincial upload. Uh, and so that's been a number of years that the province has probably a decade uh, uploaded each of those programs. And it's, it's 
really helped out the regional budget and allowed some uh, some room at the local <coughs> level as well. So that's about 1.5 percent on top of. So it'd be two and a half or two percent. So now it's three and a half. Uh, the police also used um, reserves essentially to get their budget down, and that accounted for I think about one and a half percent. And then the region at the last minute also dipped into some of its reserved and into that fund and that's about a 0.75 so the, if if the region didn't make some of those changes and didn't take advantage of some of the uploading it'd be probably five and three quarter percent or almost six percent um, so it'll be an interesting budget in 2019 without that upload um, the growth then there was I think it was one and a half roughly percent for growth uh, but that was, again, that's across the region and our growth, as we know, uh, is substantially higher and we heard in West Lincoln that it's high as well, et cetera. But that's kind of the aggregate growth across the region was one and a half and ours is 2.8, so. And there are some stress points. So one of the major stress points is that the public health funding has not been increased in the last couple of years. And it's really starting to show. I, I, I agree with you, the next year's budget will be probably one of the toughest ones because there'll be no more uploading. Right. And it will be, we're heading to an election year, which also brings with it the drama related to getting new budgets, et cetera. Um, in my opinion, over the last 10 years at least, um, it's hard to find any excess, mm -hmm. any surplus to look for savings. So. The other change was we um, didn't fund the entire summer games, which was something that, uh, so we, I think we did half of that funding. So again, that's going to be on the next year's budget as well. So. Although it looks uh, it looks good this year, uh, I think as we saw with the police budget, sometimes when you do a, a low budget, then the next year it's a high budget. So um, I wanted to just at least inform the public of that. Thank you very much, Councillor Beatty, you. for your uh, for your presentation, and we wish you all the best over the holiday as well. Uh, so it has been moved by Councillor Papp, second by Councillor Kersey. Be it resolved that the <coughs> December seventh, two thousand seventeen report submitted by Regional Councillor Beatty be received for information. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Now we move to adoption of minutes. It's been moved by Councillor Durley, second by Councillor Ribiak. Be it resolved, following minutes be adopted as printed, circulated, and read. Minutes of the regular meeting of Council of December 4th and of our special Council meeting of December 4th, 2017. Any errors or omissions in those minutes? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Now we move to consent agenda uh, uh, items to be considered in block. We had already lifted that one item. Um, are there any items that uh, council colleagues would like to lift for separate consideration? Councillor Kersey? Mr. Mayor, are we going to deal with the business rising from council? Sorry, did I miss that? I missed that. Ar arising from council minutes. Um, what, which, what I, were you a, I had an issue that I wanted to bring forward, Mr. Mayor. I think it's the most appropriate place for it to be on the agenda. Okay. Um, and the issue okay. that I would like to speak to is with reference to having the public meeting yeah. regarding the, uh, the uh, KPMG report. Okay, so the KPMG report is under number 12. Unfinished business. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll do. Think I'll wait till we'll then. We'll probably deal with that. But <coughs> I understand that we do have the have the report. We do. I haven't seen it. So it says pending receipt. The receipt is here. Sorry, I didn't say that at the beginning. So okay. can we deal with it then? That's fine. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, any items under the um, consent agenda? Can we lift? 951, which is a resolution from the City of Port Colborne regarding the Audit Committee recommendation. <coughs> and uh, Councillor King? Um, can we lift 9.4.1? I realize it's correspondence that's being received. I would just like to comment on it if I could. Okay. Do you want to? We'll lift it and, okay, thank you. Others? John, are you lifting that? Councilor Durley? Yes, I brought that before, 953. I'm sorry. 
I brought that up at the yes at the agenda. Okay, thank you. All right, so those three items. All right. So it's been moved by Councilor Ribiak, seconded by Councilor Durley. Be it resolved, the following consent agenda agenda items be received, and the recommendations contained there in be approved as applicable. Presentations uh, of recommendations arising from the committee of the whole meeting of December 4th and of the special committee of the whole meeting uh, under the Planning Act of December 11th. Minutes for approval of committee. Again, minutes of that December 4th meeting and minutes of the special committee of the whole meeting and Planning Act minutes of December 11th. We have some uh, reports of routine nature for information or action. Um, be it resolved the council received the 2016 building department year end results for information. That was 931. Under 932, Central Auto, yeah, be it resolved the council received the report recommending approval for the erection of a new electronic sign for the business establishment known as Central Auto Niagara, and the council approved the electronic sign as outlined in the report. Uh, 933 Public Art Installations, be it resolved the Council receive the concept sheet of how we might work with E.L. Crosley Art Department to display student artwork in the Municipal Office for information, and we did speak about that already. 934, a development agreement regarding 190 Canberra Road, be it resolved that the Community Planning and Development Department report for 190 Canberra Road be received and the Council approve the bylaw authorizing the Mayor and Clerk to enter into a development agreement with Dahan Homes regarding 190 Canberra Road. Action correspondence. Um, the item 941 has been lifted. We'll deal with that separately. The City of Port Colborne Resolution 951 has been lifted. And 953 has been lifted. So we do have the um, information from the Ministry of Finance. Be it resolved, the Council received the correspondence from the Ministry of Finance dated November 20th, 2017, re regarding the release of the Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund <coughs> Municipal Allocations 2018 for information. We also have under 954 responses to the proposed change to the composition of Regional Council. We've already dealt with that matter, but uh, we have the motion here, be it resolved, the Council receive for information correspondence from the following municipalities in relation to add an additional representative for West Lincoln, the Town of Niagara Lake, the Town of Fort Erie, the City of Port Colborne, the City of Niagara Falls, the Township of Waynefleet. Those are the matters. Any matters to be uh, discussed that are on <clears throat> the consent agenda that members would like to discuss? I do want to inform members that uh, the City of St. Catharines did not approve the, uh, the, way, the additional seat. I think it was a recorded vote of 10 to 2, I've heard. So um, <laughs> we'll see if there's still some municipalities dealing with that matter. Uh, any other items? Ms. Ben Ravensway, the, um, the public art installation and civic facilities, I guess great to see obviously and, and have the students here this is the this is the start um, will we be working with them and others uh, for the Pelham Community Center as I kind of alluded to at the beginning Through you, mr. Mary um, most definitely this is just a start. Uh, this, um, came fairly quickly uh, and we wanted to jump on the opportunity to start and as well our public art advisory committee will be involved in this perfect um, as of the beginning of January, we'll be meeting with them, setting them up, and then uh, they will be actually advising council. That's great. Going forward. It was the, the uh, Mayor's Youth Advisory Council members were, were anxious to uh, get moving on the public art portion, right. and they raised it, and council added uh, some um, reps from the Mayor's Youth Advisory Council to that, so they're, they're quite anxious, and I'll bring that report to them, and uh, we look forward to that committee meeting. Thank you. Is it about that matter? Yes. Sir? Go ahead. Yes, it is. <clears throat> Just for clarity, um, the pieces that we have here now, are they going to be returned to the school or the students at some point, or do we own those permanently? And the second part of my question is, if, if are, are we going to see a rotation of these things year after year after year? Please. Ms. Van Ravensway. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, yes. These particular uh, pieces of art will be... Um, removed each semester okay they'll go through the same process and these Great. will be given back to the students 
Wonderful. Thank you. Mr. Okay. Mayor. Thank you. Anything else under consent agenda? If not, oh, I'm sorry, Councillor Kersey, go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to speak uh, regarding 9.5.5 item two with reference to the uh, water wastewater budget that uh, <coughs> Regional Niagara recently passed and approved. Okay. Um, go ahead. It, it raised uh, a little bit of concern in my mind uh, in that um, the preamble to the motion being approved uh, from staff uh, pointed out that there was, in fact, well, while they were within the 2% that they've mandated at the region, yep. uh, it leaves the region with a funding gap for capital of s in excess of $77 million. And if one looks at... Mm -hmm. The reserve funds going forward mm -hmm. for wastewater and water. Mm -hmm. In fact, in 2019, there will be no reserve for wastewater, and 2022, there'll be virtually no reserve for water. That's correct. Which means that uh, capital uh, projects will need to be funded out of the levy, okay. or uh, they'll need to uh, find some additional sources. And what that, the impact of that to local municipalities is that the uh, cost per gallon that we pay will most likely go up. And that will, of course, have a negative impact on the water bills that, and the wastewater bills that our, our folks see. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, <clears throat> it's interesting that the region uh, wanted to get into our business and look at our reserves and our cash flows and uh, our increases and what have you. But it points out the, the fact that if one doesn't, uh, it's okay to mandate a 2% maximum levy. But when you have to use creative accounting and you deplete your reserves and you create risk in a system, particularly the water system and wastewater system, it creates a significant health risk if the infrastructure cannot be maintained. So it, it raised a bit of concern uh, on my, my part, Mr. Mayor, and I just thought I'd bring it up to uh, council for a discussion and see what our uh, our uh, other fellow councillors thought about it. Thanks very much. I don't know if other colleagues uh, have any have any thoughts on that, and I know it'll be a topic when we do discuss the water and the wastewater budget. Um, we've been absorbing all of the increases in the water wastewater budget the last number of years. We've had our water budget at zero for the last four years um, and and essentially in, in some cases it's half of what it is in other communities um, but you're quite right that the region has essentially depleted its reserves um, it, they didn't invest them they just depleted them mm -hmm. so there's no capital asset there they've just taken it all out and 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 their view is well it's there let's let's spend it um, in the sense of artificially keeping the, the rate the low, rate as you've rate indicated. Uh, we've received other reports, which I can provide this council if you're interested, um, saying essentially that there's a number of works that haven't been done in water, wastewater specifically, and that they do need to be done. So again, as, as we talked about earlier, it's going to be a difficult time on the water and wastewater infrastructure side at the region. Um, so 2019 is going to be a challenge year for that exactly because of that a number of projects have been held off and they need to be replaced and, and upgraded so it's a good point I think that you're that you're raising um, and something to think about as we look at our water and wastewater right. budget I don't know if anyone else wants to add anything Councillor Papp quickly I couldn't agree more with Councillor Kersey that should be part of a full debate when we consider our budget because mm -hmm. Having been around, I've seen the um, things happen when money wasn't there and water and waste treatment plants were let go, mm -hmm. close to crisis, and this was part of the plan to rebuild. But if they're depleting it, then we're facing another potential health risk, and that's something that obviously we'd have to observe. So let's talk about it at that <coughs> particular budget discussion. One of the things that I tried to say at the region was uh, we should be planning to eliminate the... Um, they're called the overflows for sewage. Mm -hmm. And we adopted a new water, <coughs> wastewater master plan, 25 years, and we're not even taking care of what we're doing in terms of the overflows. Oh. So yep. uh, there's still, when it rains, and we know that those rains are getting 
uh, more frequent, there still will be dumping untreated water and sewer water into the environment, which is, which is sad. So it's something to look at. I digress and I apologize, so let's move on. Uh, unless there's anyone else on the region's uh, budget, which was included in the, in the report here. Okay, we're going to call the question on the uh, consent agenda items. All those in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. That motion <coughs> carries. Thank you. Um, Councillor Durley, I'm going to turn to you first because you raised the item regarding uh, 953, the Township of Waynefleet and the federal changes. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There was a resolution passed by the Township of Waynefleet. Uh, currently, or up until this year, the federal government allowed one-third <coughs> tax exemption for municipal councillors, which was to absorb some of the costs that we would absorb, we would have going from, uh, say, our Pelham to uh, to Fort Erie for a meeting, uh, the expenses that other municipalities or upper tier charges in mileage, and and obviously we don't, but there are some expenses that are uh, incumbent upon us doing our job properly that this one third really covered. Uh, the federal government has proposed, not actually, has taken it away in the 2017 federal budget. What Waynefleet is now saying is that uh, uh, they wish that this would all come back because, in fact, if that one-third isn't there, the municipalities have to uh, increase the amount of money that councillors get, and we're not into that. We don't want that. We, we're happy with what we have, even though it's, uh, you know, it's on the lower scale, but that's, we know what we're getting into when we, when we run for this position. Or uh, we're going to have to absorb it, which, in fact, we will if we have to. However, uh, that one-third was something that was uh, perhaps a hidden benefit for us. However, it wasn't really a benefit. It was a, uh, <coughs> something that covered expenses. And I think uh, we should definitely support and endorse this and okay. going to the Ontario Federal of Agriculture to lobby the federal government in order to, to do that. And the I've given you the resolution. Do you want to read it out? The resolution is here. And... Maybe it's smaller than that. <laughs> uh, be it resolved, the Council of the Town of Pelham receive, endorse, and support the Township of Waynefleet Resolution of December 5, 2017, respecting federal changes to municipal <coughs> councillor taxation on income, and that a copy of this revolu resolution be forwarded to the Township of Waynefleet, Ontario Federation of Agriculture, local MPPs, and to Cheryl Glant, MP Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke. Okay, thank you, and that's seconded by Councillor Ribiak. Anyone else to this? Councillor Ribiak, quickly. Th yes, th thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I, I certainly support uh, that. The fact of the matter is that, um, as, as Councillor Durley has pointed out, we do have expenses related to this, and none of us on this council have done anything about uh, putting in anything around expenses related to our position, because I think, other than when we go to conferences, something of that nature, but. With respect to our, the, the performance of our, our, our duties generally, we understand that our expenses have been covered and we've done nothing about attempting to recover them. I don't understand, frankly, why the federal government would think that it's a good idea to discourage participation in, at any level of government by people who uh, want to get into it but, but who, who may need to have that, that, that kind of support. My, my thought is that somehow, maybe somewhere, somebody's actually collecting expenses and maybe not claiming that on their tax returns and so uh, are getting a taxable benefit in that they get a third of their stipend tax-free, but they're also charging... Um, I, I don't believe uh, anyone would do that, but on the other hand, I'm not naive either. So if somebody thought that there was some opportunity somewhere to recover uh, lost taxes, that I guess might be a way to do it. But certainly I know that in this council, and I suspect in, in most lowest tier municipal councils, people are here doing this job because we think it's important to be done. And the fact that our, our, some portion of our, our, our uh, expenses have been covered, I think, seem to work perfectly well. So this change, I don't understand. I want to endorse this, and I would hope that, that senior heads prevail at, at other levels of government and understand that this is a real discouragement, a uh, real kick at uh, people wanting to do a job for for, for, the, for, for the people of this, uh, of this municipality and elsewhere. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor. Anyone else? I'm going to call the question. Mm -hmm. Thank you for raising it. All those in favor? 
Any opposed? That motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Thank you. Councillor King, you lifted uh, 941? Yes, Can Mr. Mayor. Can we deal Mayor. with that? Go ahead. Yes. Um, I'm a little puzzled by the fact that we're receiving a resolution from the um, Pelham Seniors Advisory Committee prior to receiving the minutes that they refer to of December the 6th. Because I would be interested in knowing what was the discussion um, on December the 6th that led to this resolution being received. And the other part of my puzzlement, I guess we'll call it, um, is whether this action was something that the committee was asked to consider and whether this was something that came out of a recommendation from the original design committee for the um, community centre. So I, I, obviously I'm not going to get answers to my questions unless um, someone is able to, to respond. Councillor Papp's able to respond, but I'm going to just turn to the clerk first because my recollection of the terms of reference of this and other committees is that should there be a resolution that it would come in a letter from the chair. Uh, Madam Clerk, is that correct? Through you, Mr. Mayor, yes. So I think the um, P Pelham Seniors Advisory Committee has done that on other issues. In other cases, we've had presentations here, et cetera, mm -hmm. in advance of the minutes of the meeting. So that's the first part of your question, I think, yes. answered. It's sort of standard practice. We don't have someone here uh, from the committee, like the chair or whatever, so we will turn to Councillor Papp, our representative on the committee. Councillor Papp. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And through you to uh, Councillor King. First of all, it had nothing to do with the design requirements other than the community center. It mm -hmm. came out of some formal and informal discussions over the development of affordable housing in the area, uh, the community center, and the feeling was of the group that at the time that maybe there's a need for us to keep some property for a variety of different other outdoor recreational facilities. So they uh, took it upon themselves, and I also tried to advise them that, you know, we're in the midst of dealing with our surplus properties, that mm -hmm. it's a good gesture. I don't know where it would take us, but that there's other options. And I know Mr. Mayor and myself had discussions with the committee to say, uh, good idea, but let's look at other more creative ways of doing this. So that's why this has appeared here. Uh, I apologize if it didn't come out the way it did, but I guess they want to make sure that anything that is continues to build upon their uh, ability to serve the seniors. So some of the stuff will be done inside the community center. There were some areas in which they wanted to look at other possibilities. So we'll leave it at that, and uh, we'll continue to dialogue with them. Okay. Thank you for the explanation. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Councilor, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Papp, I understood that some of it was, um, so please correct me if I'm wrong, that some of the committee members were th understanding that there might be a, a money available for different yeah. projects and things. Is that what also prompted this? Yeah. There's other possibilities of access to provincial money that they could, they could uh, apply for <laughs> later on, mm -hmm. that they could build on some of the specific areas of recreational use. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pursue that. Mm -hmm. We'll do that in the new year. Okay. So that'll build on, but this specifically, you know, it, it's, it's nice to say, but right now we don't have that kind of surplus, if you want to call it, to give to them. Mm -hmm. Is there an option to work with other groups on that? The answer is absolutely yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 I, 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 think, I think it's something, uh, the, maybe the essence behind it, yeah. Council can, can keep in mind. For instance, there's some um, work, it's a bit premature, but the trail system, right. there's a group that's working with the trail system and, and doing something there, and that could be right. uh, appropriate and, and seniors or age friendly as they call it that's correct uh, the woo nerf um you know could if there's provincial funding yeah. maybe that could have and ensure that that area that piazza area is appropriate for seniors activities and then there's the park as well so th there's a lot of area and land in, in in and around the community center which is i think the idea um it it, it comes out here a little bit a little bit different than that. Yeah, so I think a, pr a process of working together with the committee yeah. and perhaps through you, uh, Councillor, we can continue to do that. And, and quickly uh, through you to the, the other part of this is, is, as you know, our community is one of the very few 
that have been designated by the World Health Organization as a seniors friendly community. So there are pre-requirements pre which we are getting that ask what is the municipality doing to continue to advance those uh, those areas. So this will be one, what are the things that we can be doing. So I'll be bringing, the committee will be bringing more, uh, how could I say, detailed and, and concise uh, approaches to that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kersey, did you have or your... Uh, no, Mr. Mayor, I was just going to comment about uh, the potential for other municipal um, uh, partnerships. Uh, yeah, I, th exactly. I think of Park Hill butts on to uh, a large park. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure they would be amenable to providing senior space there yep. that would access to the park and uh, that sort of thing. So I think there are other opportunities that can be pursued. Okay, definitely. Thank you. So uh, the motion is uh, has been moved by Councillor Ribiak, seconded by Councillor Durley to receive and I think um, kind of the direction is that we want to want to keep that sentiment there yeah. and work together with the committee to make sure that, that the idea right. which is uh, uh, for diversified recreational use doesn't get lost and that we continue to work on that okay thank you so I'm gonna call the question all those in favor any opposed that motion carries thank you I lifted uh, an item here and this is a 951 um, the recommendation, which has been moved by uh, Councilor Rubiak, second by Councilor Durley, be resolved that Council for the Town of Pelham receive the City of Port Colborne resolution advising of their opposition to the Regional Audit Committee recommendations regarding the Town of Pelham be received. Um, I was very pleased uh, and surprised to, to see this uh, resolution. I had no idea. I don't know if anybody, any councillors had an idea that it was, it was going to occur. But they had a very, very lively discussion. I understand it was unanimous, saying, uh, similar to what we spoke about earlier, saying that uh, the region is getting involved in the local municipal um, concerns, shouldn't be involved. And the city said they don't even want to receive this resolution that the audit committee did. We've asked the region to rescind. That did not appear on the regional council agenda. It should be there at the next meeting. Um, so I was. Again, very pleased, uh, surprised, and pleased with the resolution. And I think um, perhaps we should send a thank you letter to the city, mm -hmm. uh, to the council for their um, for this, and encourage other <coughs> municipal councils to do the same. Um, this is a bit of a um, sphere of influence creep mm -hmm. from the region getting involved, and I think that's exactly. I did call some of the councillors from that council afterwards, a couple days later, and that's what they indicated to me that they're certainly supportive of what the town is doing, uh, but also worried about what the region's doing and how it might creep into local municipal um, spheres of influence. So um, <coughs> at minimum, perhaps the mover and the seconder, uh, Ribiak Durley, we could uh, certainly send a letter of thanks uh, to, the, uh, to the council for their resolution. And I don't know if we want to encourage others. I think they're sending it around, but certainly a letter of thanks at minimum. Absolutely. That's okay. All right. So um, anything further to that? I'll call the question then on receiving and sending a letter of thanks to the uh, Council of Port Colborne and the City. All those in favor, any opposed, that motion is carried as amended. Thank you very much. Diversity of topics on tonight's agenda. So now we move to uh, reports requiring action. We have one report. It's regarding the 2018 strategic plan. It's been moved by Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Kersey. Be it resolved, the Council receives the 2018 strategic plan report and the Council approves the 2018 strategic plan report in its entirety. Mr. CAO, I'm going to turn to you uh, just to give us a very brief uh, precy of sort of the, the role of council and the role of staff and how we got here and how you're going to be using uh, this information should council approve it. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as council is aware, uh, this is uh, the, uh, I 
the third year in which we've used a specific uh, strategic planning process and it has uh, proven to be very effective both from a <coughs> council and from a staff point of view. Um, as council is aware, uh, we follow a, um, a sort of a pattern on a yearly basis when we talk about uh, the strategic plan and its role is the overarching document that guides everything the council and staff does for that particular year. Um, I'm not going to go through all the steps, but basically there are several steps uh, that we go through uh, that starts with the strategic plan. We intentionally ask council to consider strategic planning prior to the budget being considered so that uh, the strategic directions laid out by council can be pro appropriately funded um, and, and considered in the budget, which is a discussion that will be happening uh, uh, at committee later this evening. Um, this year, after the uh, council went through their process of um, um, a strategic planning, planning, we as staff identified um, um, four different sort of categories of the plan that we would be addressing as part of the initiatives um, portion of the plan that would uh, support the council uh, objectives and goals. And uh, the four categories basically are policies. Um, being the first, there are a number of policies that council have identified this year. Um, and there has been some policies that have been identified outside of strategic planning that we know are related and are important. And I've included a number of them. By no means is this an exhaustive list. There are other policies, but it gives you an idea of the direction that we're going. Uh, so policies will be handled um, as a separate item, and those policies will uh, staff will be using the uh, policies and priorities committee uh, to advance those policy drafts for council consideration throughout 2018. Um, the next category are areas that council has identified that fall as specific senior management responsibilities. Um, and a lot of these things are, are programs or policies that are already underway. Um, and again, uh, we look at things like completing the PCC on time and on budget that's been identified in previous plans and carried over to this one, uh, completing fundraising campaigns, uh, executing financial plans, uh, completing sale of land, etc. Uh, those items were um, uh, identified as being the responsibility of uh, individual or specific senior managers. And then as an extension of that, uh, we have the department responsibilities, so departmental projects, and most of these again are underway. Uh, we talk in that area about completing the zoning bylaw, the East Fenwick Secondary Plan, the development charges bylaw. Um, we look at rural road issues, fixing broken infrastructure, etc. Uh, we talk about uh, metrics to evaluate financial sustainability. Um, we talk about uh, in, in effective communications and uh, in uh, implementing communication strategies. Um, the fourth area are, uh, of the plan will be the uh, um, continuation of interdepartmental teams. And uh, we have new and existing interdepartmental teams for uh, 2018. And again, the, the teams that we're uh, recommending are resident-led neighborhood improvements. Um, that will build, that team will be building on the work of last year's team, which introduced the uh, Love Your Hood program. Uh, the idea of this team is to take that concept and expand it to include mm -hmm. things like traffic calming, speeding issues, uh, art, uh, et cetera, in neighborhoods, and how to empower citizens to take the lead on addressing neighborhood specific issues. Um, the next team will be the um, PCC Grand Opening Committee, obviously uh, with a significant opening happening this summer. Uh, we want to make sure that it is uh, a celebration worthy of the, um, the project, so uh, that would be something that will de uh, designate some staff to planning and delivering. Uh, the next team would be the risk of climate change on infrastructure. Again, a theme that has come up for the last uh, few years. We have done some work on, on this uh, particular issue, um, but we would like to continue that with an emphasis on the impact of climate change in relation to bridges and culverts, um, uh, stormwater, et cetera, that are um, of immediate concern in the municipality of things that we are currently dealing with as a result of uh, climate change. The next uh, interdepartmental team is the Public Works Process Improvement Team. Um, Public Works has formed their own innovation team and they actively seek ways to find efficiencies and save money uh, throughout the department. Uh, the reason that Public Works has their own team is simply the fact that Public Works is our largest uh, department um, and covers arguably the largest array of various activities, uh, everything from snow removal to um, uh, ensuring our parks are, are looked after um, mm. and again, all, everything in between. So uh, we constantly look at them to provide innovative and uh, cost-saving ways that we can um, uh, uh, continue to innovate. 
Uh, finally, the two existing teams that we will be bringing back are uh, the green team. Again, a highly successful team. Um, they've taken, as an example, their work has taken the uh, supper market and the uh, Thursday night events and made it a zero waste event, uh, which is a, a tremendous accomplishment. Um, they've instituted uh, recycling and green programs within our building, and they also look at um, the overall performance environmentally of the municipality. So that team we propose to continue. Uh, we also propose to continue the workplace health and safety team. Now, workplace health and safety, I will say, is a uh, legislative responsibility of the municipality. Uh, however, we have expanded that scope to incorporate um, a number of health and safety issues. And um, as Council is aware, we have recently completed a workplace health and safety audit. Uh, that audit has a number of uh, non-compliant issues contained within it that uh, we need to deal with immediately. And uh, workplace health and safety will continue to be a high priority for us. Uh, this year. Uh, there are a number of areas that um, uh, we will need to address and uh, that we'll need to continue to work on, uh, both in conjunction with the legislative requirements and also what we need to accomplish as a uh, municipality. So those that's the highlight of the interdepartmental teams. Um, to conclude, um, we know that the interdepartmental teams are integral to our performance management program. And again, as all staff will participate on at least one team, uh, part of their job description and their um, uh, performance is linked to uh, the, um, the teams and the success of the teams that they participate on, and that will continue this year as well. Great. Thank you very much for that uh, recap of the strategic planning and the, the work that staff's uh, done and what, what's behind the recommendation that we have before us this evening. Members of Council have any questions or comments following that very comprehensive uh, uh, presentation by the, by the CAO? I do want to just underscore something uh, about Public Works and the work that they're doing or have done, and I think our Director had highlighted that it's at Committee, now it's here at Council, we have approved it already, but just the number of advancements and innovations that uh, Public Works has done over the last year is, is outstanding. So I'm pleased to see that, as I'm sure all of Council is, that that uh, group is going to continue and look for additional innovations uh, to make the work that we do even better. Unless there's anything else by members of Council, I'm going to call the question. All those in favour? Any opposed? Thank you. That motion is carried. Thanks very much. We look forward to the results, not only the, the planning, but the working of the plan. So thank you. Now we move to that item uh, that Councillor Kersey had uh, <coughs> spoken about earlier and a lot of folks in the community have been asking questions about, and this is really unfinished business, the, uh, this is regarding the KPMG Forensic Investigation Report. It said here on the agenda, pending receipt, and I understand from staff that late this afternoon we did receive uh, the report or reports from KPMG. So I'm going to turn to the CAO to, uh, to speak about that. Mr. CAO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As you have indicated, we have received the final reports from KPMG. Uh, the report is, uh, I understand, to be 66 pages in length plus attachments, and there are a number of attachments. So this was a very sizable and comprehensive report that KPMG undertook. Um, there was a total of 159 questions submitted independently from the public, as Council directed. Um, many of those questions uh, could be put into, I think you would call them themes or categories, uh, and many of those questions were redundant questions or questions that have been asked uh, in similar ways. So they have been uh, broken out, and in the report, KPMG has itemized each question and then indicated uh, where that answer to the question can be found in that 66-page report. So it's all indexed so that you can, if you posed a question, you should be able to look on the appendix, see where your question is, and then it will tell you where in the report you find the answer. Uh, I will also highlight that there are, uh, with those questions, there was a number of questions that quite simply uh, were out of scope. Uh, things like, um, you know, how much did the arena, or how much did the um, Maple Leaf Little Library cost, for example, was a question. How much did, uh, um, you know, other various projects cost? Those were completely out of the scope of the audit and uh, weren't considered. So in those questions, those questions that were completely out of scope, you'll see an A beside them. Uh, and whoever asked those questions, um, uh, would be encouraged to uh, find an alternative way to, to seek an answer to that, whether it be a freedom of information request, et cetera. Um, the, um, again, the highlight of the audit is that um, we, when we looked at, uh, when Council considered the audit, it was at um, 
response to allegations that have been made uh, against the municipality uh, from a uh, developer in particular, uh, but also that uh, had been um, um, forwarded by um, the Regional Audit Committee. Uh, and those were largely in relation to some of the activities that uh, the town had undertaken in the East Swan Hill and particular to East Swan Hill land transactions. There was allegations that the municipality was printing money in the basement, that there was fraudulent activity, uh, that there was all sorts of, uh, I'll just say, monkey business going on in relation to those transactions. And uh, um, council then decided to undertake uh, this audit and to make it public. And I am very pleased to say that the audit found that all of the allegations that were made were false. And I'll conclude my comments at that. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. I uh, uh, turn to members of council. Councillor Papp, did you want to? Yes, if you don't mind. Go ahead. I'll start. Uh, firstly, uh, as being part of council for 15 years, part of my job is always to be representative and to be accurate and to make sure that I have the confidence of my colleagues and staff. So in that light, I'm going to make this statement, and I hope people will, try, will understand and... Uh, see where I'm coming from because I have I do understand the meaning of the word humility so I want to state that in response to a recent article on the in the voice on December 6th and now in conjunction with the release of the audit findings of KPMG uh, that were released today and my briefing on it my comments as stated in the December 6th article were inaccurate and untimely I sincerely apologize to the community of Pelham I apologize to the mayor members of council, Pelham staff, it is quite clear that the findings have found no fraudulent activities, no findings on reported debt, debt, and in fact there is full compliance that I'm confident will meet the, that meets the provincial legislative financial requirements for local municipalities. Moreover, I shall wholeheartedly work with my colleagues and staff to restore the faith and trust of our citizens and of our municipality in our ability to continue on meeting the financial requirements and operational uh, necessities of our current town and in the future. And again, I sincerely apologize. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Papp. I think uh, all of us uh, appreciate you uh, bringing some clarity uh, to that issue. Thank you and accept your apology. Thank you. Other Members, I know Councillor Kersey had, had signaled earlier that you wanted to discuss this matter, and there's a few other colleagues. So I'll start with you, Councillor Kersey, and again, thank you, Councillor Th Councillor. Thank Kersey. you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I've given this quite a lot of thought. Uh, as an individual who truly believes in participation of the public in the governing uh, process, uh, you know I've spoken long and hard about volunteers being involved, having them involved in advisory committees so that we get a sense of what our community's needs are and uh, the direction they would like us to go. But after giving careful thought and consideration to this, I came to the conclusion, we've, we've been dealing with this matter since March of 2017 when Councillor Barrick brought a, a motion which was unfounded and unsubstantiated to regional council. And since that time, we have endeavored to answer all of the allegations in an open and transparent way. I know of no other community that would have produced a 335 page assertion and response to a regional motion all of which I must point out was entirely out of the scope of um, responsibility of the region. Having said that though, we felt in, in an effort to be open and transparent and to deliver um, a response to Councillor Barrick, but more so to try and answer some of the concerns that were raised by our community members. Again, not directly to us, but through the venue of the region. We also uh, held a meeting called Meet the Experts Night, where we brought in not councillors, we brought in the experts who had advised us as we moved through the, 
the myriad of legislation and uh, the pitfalls that are contained therein to ensure that we have complied fully with all legislation and all laws of the province of Ontario. The public had an opportunity to ask whatever questions they wanted to with respect to the issues that were raised by the Barrick motion. Still, the region continued to involve themselves in our business. And while we tried to take a firm stand through various actions at the regional council table in failing to recognize our mayor and the motions put forward by our mayor, both at council and at the audit committee, the municipality of uh, Pelham had to spend more time, more money, more staffing time, more council time on trying to address the issues that the region portrayed as concerns of a significant number of our citizenry. To that end, we authorized a scoped KPMG audit. Completely independent, they were able to come in, look at the records of the town, and examine them fully and bring forward a report to the community at the same time as this council received that report. That is unprecedented that a council has not had an opportunity to re receive a report prior to it going or at the same time as the public sees it. In addition to that scoped audit that we initially approved, we subsequently authorized the release of information that um, came to us on September the 5th. And we asked them to explain the findings there to the public. Again, we did not know the slant at which they would be displaying or revealing that information to the public. But I, for one, had great confidence that we had acted appropriately within the scope of the law and in the best interests of this municipality. And now, Mr. Mayor, we've received a 66-page report plus attachments answering not only the, the audit and the additional information, but responding to questions that were put forward by the community. They were allowed a, a full month to put forward questions directly to KPMG. Again, an unprecedented step for any municipality to take. 12 pages in all, Mr. Mayor. I see no other municipality in all of Ontario and perhaps no other municipality in Canada that has gone to the extent that we have to be open and transparent. It's time to get on with the business of the municipality. I realized that this council had stated that we would hold a subsequent meeting to allow further questioning from the municipality. Mr. Mayor, I want to bring forward a motion, and it's a very simple motion, that we not move forward with the public meeting to afford the opportunity of further questioning. I think I can think of no other questions that could come forward to answer the issues that have been before this community since March of 2017. It is time that we move, move forward with the governance of this municipality. We have a budget to attack. We have lots of work to do in this community. It's time that we focus on that and we allow our staff to get back to the business of administering this municipality. So Mr. Mayor, I do not have a seconder for this motion, but I put it forward <clears throat> and I ask council colleagues, one of them to second it and to support this motion going forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Thank for the opportunity. Much. Um, thank you. I do have a motion that so we can add this as an amendment. Um, I haven't, we haven't put it on the floor yet. It's just a, a discussion. Uh, but it, it, we could put it on now. It's, it's moved by Councillor Durley, second by Councillor Ribiak. Be resolved the Council for the Town of Pelham receive the KPMG forensic <coughs> audit investi forensic investigation report 
dated December 18th, 2017. The council hereby accepts the report and directs staff to post a copy on the town's municipal website for information of interested parties. So what I recommend is that we add that um, and we'll get the wording if there's a seconder for your amendment to this motion. I'm quite happy to do it that way, Mr. Mayor. So my motion would be a, an amendment that we not proceed or not move forward with the public meeting uh, 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 as originally proposed by council. Okay. Is there a seconder for that? Councillor King? And you've identified the rationale for that. So what's in order now is to discuss that amendment to the motion about the utility of a public meeting or not. Um, so I'm going to turn to Councillor Rubiak. Or right, maybe unless Councillor King wants to go first as a seconder. <coughs> uh, yes, I wouldn't mind actually. Go ahead. Um, I'm not going to reiterate any of what Councillor Kersey has said. I'm seconding this motion simply because several weeks back I had the opportunity to provide comment. I did. I was brutally... Um, brutally attacked by certain members of the public. So in terms of Councillor Kersey's um, motion, I agree full-heartedly. Enough is enough. We need to move on. We have provided the communication and the transparency to the general public that is for sure unprecedented by any other municipality. So yes, I will second this motion not to hold another meeting. We have given enough information. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Ribia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I, I thank Councillor Kersey for his his thoughts and, and Councillor King for for her support of them. Um, I've not given this a whole lot of thought because of course this is the first moment that we've we heard this motion. But I have to I have to be I have to say that I'm reluctant in supporting that, and let me try to explain why. Um, I'm perfectly prepared, as, as, as I did, to second the motion to accept the, the report, even though <coughs> I haven't seen it yet. None of us have seen it. It was released, I guess, to, to staff, but I was unaware of, of the fact that we'd received it until, until just a moment ago when you, when you mentioned it. I am fully confident that that it indicates that nothing untoward had occurred because I've been involved in everything that's gone up to now, and I can tell you that I haven't been involved in anything untoward, so the report would certainly not indicate anything other than that in my view. And I'm perfectly prepared to release it to the public sight unseen because I'm 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 convinced that there's nothing in it that would that would be an issue. I too am reluctant to go into a, a a public session in which the sole purpose is to uh, express a difference of opinion with us as to how things should have proceeded. I'm talking about a difference of opinion as opposed to uh, allegations of wrongdoing. We've heard both. I think that, that a lot of uh, what what started in the community was a difference of opinion about a variety of things, whether we should have purchased the land in the first place, whether we should have had a community center at all, whether the community center should have been consisting of one thing or another. There's just a whole lot of decisions that, that have been made uh, that have two sides to them in the opinions of, of, of the public. I, I, don't, I don't think that, that I want to be involved in any discussion around that. We've made our decisions, we're going forward, uh, people are entitled to, to a different opinion than the one that we had. They're entitled to express it. They do. That, that's all part of the normal work. What I'm not anxious to do, what I'm very reluctant to do, is to deal any further with uh, any suggestion, any, any allegation that something untoward has happened within this council or within the staff, because it hasn't. 
My view is that the report that has been written that answered all of those questions, and again, I haven't seen it, will have answered those questions accurately and completely, and that all that is left, if there is anything left, all that is left are any questions that people have on factual things that have not been answered. And again, I haven't read the report. I'm confident that every question that was put forward uh, has been answered, has been answered thoroughly and accurately. But I don't know what I don't know. I don't know that somebody out there has a, a, a question that arises out of what they've, they've written. And it's a question on fact, not on, on opinion, and not an allegation, but a question of fact. So I, I, would, I would love us somehow to enter into an exercise in which we can address any questions that people may still have that have not yet been answered. If anybody has questions that, have, that exist within that report, I'm sorry, we don't need another exercise to go through that. So I'm a little reluctant to, to, to say unequivocally that we would not have another meeting because I don't know that there isn't a question like that that might be out there and I would not want to be in a position to say to somebody, you know what, yeah, that's a legitimate question, but, but we've ended the process. So I don't know if there's some, some possibility of us inviting people to look at this report. If they feel they still have questions, to let us know what questions they have that have not been answered. If, they, if all the questions have been answered, we don't need to answer them anymore. If people aren't fully accepting of the answer that they get from the experts, well, I, I don't think that we can help that very much. You know, the experts are the experts. They, they tell us uh, what they know when we, we accept that. But if there happens to be something that has yet to be addressed, I wouldn't want to okay. forestall any opportunity to answer that. Whether that has to be a public meeting or not, I don't know. But that's why I'm, I'm reluctant to, to support at this point a, a, um, a, a suggestion that we would not meet. I would rather, Mr. Mayor, uh, that, that we hold off on that motion until this thing has been out in the public, that they have a chance to, to, to look at it, have a chance to express whether there are still, in fact, any questions that have not been answered, questions of fact, not questions of opinion, and uh, then make a decision as to whether another meeting is warranted or okay. not warranted. Anyway, that's my position. All right, thank you. <coughs> Anyone else to the amendment? Councillor Pop. So I'll be brief. I concur, Councillor Rebeck, with you. Um, even though I'm, it's debatable about whether or not if the substance and the merits of a public meeting or whatever kind of protocol you use will yield the kinds of things that need to be answered. But it may be worthwhile to hold off. Let's all have a chance to read the report, the public included. And if there is merits to move ahead with something like that, that then I, uh, I agree with you. And it's not, uh, as I said to you myself when I first started a few minutes ago, sometimes things, you don't get them right. And I'm willing to admit that. I didn't get that right. But I'm willing to also understand that our public needs to feel that we've crossed that bridge. And that bridge, if it obviously is documented, and I have full 150% confidence that it's there. But like you say, if it's innuendo, if it's allegation, I'm going to say it unequivocally. I want no part of it. That's right. Thank you. Councilor Durling. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Building on what the um, amendment says, for 10 months we've been asking for questions and answering questions. We've gone through the process uh, four or five different ways, and the same questions have been asked in a different way. People have wordsmithed answer questions. Uh, somebody... Eric, for example, started with something, all that was disproven, and a, a developer came through and asked the same questions in different words. So, in fact, this report, the report that was done at A.L. Crosley, and, and this report, I haven't seen it either, but in fact, I, I want everybody to be able to have a look at these questions, but in fact, as the CAO has said, if in fact the definite themes are made there, well, I didn't ask that question. But the theme of the question was there. So I, I think emotion is taken over from actual intellect in this particular case, in a lot of cases. So in fact, I, I agree 
something may come out, but there's going to be a question regardless because we're going to say, you know, that, that, that ink is red. Well, no, it's not. It's faded a bit. It's pink. Yeah, that's a question, but is, is it relevant? I don't know. I don't think so. So, in fact, um, I, I think we need to get that report out, and I think people need to get it, and I hope people put motions, emotions aside and look at it intellectually and say, it's right, because I right from the start, since March, since, since we started this whole thing, there has not been a mistake made. There has not been something in, 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 uh, really that we intentionally did that was wrong. There's nothing at all. It's been proven six times, at least. So put this thing out. People out there that still have doubts, keep your doubts. And in, in fact, I, I, look for the answer in what the KPMG did. We went through a lot of time. <coughs> we went through a lot of money. Staff was put through a lot of stress in order to do all this kind of stuff, all for some stuff that really has been proven to be wrong. So I, 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 I agree with the concept that Councillor Kersey has put in. I, I think that uh, you know perhaps people should be able to look at this, digest it, and say, has my question been answered? And truthfully look at it and say, the gist of my question was answered. In fact, the theme that I was looking at is this. Do you want us to stop building this community center? That's crazy. Okay, it's going to be built. The decisions have been made. Things are there. So in fact, look to help support this rather than to try and knock things down. This is the thing that we need to do when we look at change. And that's my rant. Sorry. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor. Any others? Councillor Lane? Yeah. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, I will uh, support uh, Councillor Kersey on, uh, on what he's put forward. Uh, I think it's absolutely right that we've, we've, we've run the gamut of questions and whatever. If after the fact that people have read this audit and they have questions, then I would suggest that there be a form where they ask the questions to, uh, let's say, the uh, CAO, uh, because he's not busy at all, right? <laughs> And let them forward questions to them by email or whatever and, 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 and have a, a form where they can ask a question, get an answer, get on with life. I don't think they need to continue to tie up the council staff's time with, with, with this. So I, I will support this. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Listening to, um, to council regarding this, this amendment, I can understand the what council's um, what council's thinking? I can understand all the points of view. Um, because we want to be, and we have that tendency. I think that's our default tendency, and I know it's mine. Uh, we want to be as open and, and transparent and accommodating to the public as possible. So, if there are questions, we try and get those questions answered. Um, one of the things I did. I promised the community when I ran for mayor was that we would open up the process and we've done that the budget process uh, we invited people in for the budget process and the involvement of that and the and the, and the groups we we we've, we've had um, you know I continue to write a column uh, each week not that the the local media they they stop printing that column but it's out there on the on the internet and, and elsewhere on um, and answering some of the questions that I hear in the community. Each of our councillors are very active in the community, answering questions from people um, on the street and at different events, and also via email. The questions and the way in which <coughs> this issue surrounding all this has been dealt with is second to none, as Councillor Kersey says, but it's, I think it's also unprecedented in the in the in the way in which it's been done calling of meetings motions on regional council agendas without without informing call you know myself not allowing me to speak and answer each of the concerns um, audit committee meetings called with no no knowledge of what it is and yet I find out afterwards that a local Publication knows what's on the agenda, and a local group, in, in quotes, knows what's on the agenda and that it's going to be discussed. Mm -hmm. We have, um, 
answered each of these questions and we asked our auditor to answer them. Now I have a copy on my computer because the clerk sent it to council during the meeting and I, as you have been talking, been looking through it. So forgive me for looking uh, through the report here. Um, but these, these questions from 50 people in the community and many of them I understand from this have been duplicates containing uh, with 160 questions and additional sub questions. That's a lot of questions <clears throat> that the, this report has been answering. And a lot of them are very, very small questions in the sense of they're important, but the big questions that, that have been um, lodged against us or the big accusations that have been lodged against us. There's fraud in Pelham, they say. And then we have to prove, instead of others proving that there is fraud, that we have to prove that there isn't fraud. Uh, that the parkland dedication was done inappropriately. We said, no, this is how it was done. Then our lawyer said, this is how it was done. And then KPMG has said, this is how it was done and agreed with it. And then there's still questions about that. The debt and the debt repayment limit and the region saying, oh, you're gonna go over your debt repayment limit or you might go over the debt repayment limit or you might cause the region problems with its finances. We heard earlier this evening, the region's causing its own problems with its finances. Uh, and and the, the, uh, the impact of, of Pelham is not going to impact the region at all and we're well within our debt repayment limit as we're gonna talk about if we get to the budget later this evening. Um, allegations like the CAO indicated, printing of DC credits in the basement. Like, these are the things that we've been answering and they're not, as you said, legitimate questions in a sense. Another interesting piece is we've invited and I've invited members of the public of that debt group to come to council to make their presentations here. I invited them on multiple occasions publicly. I sent them emails no response so there's something else going on here I think mm -hmm. and what it is is exactly clear um, and I'm not going to say what it is but there is something going on so we're not being um, uh, asked these questions when they're not coming here to council like a normal thing like that they want to um, put this in a situation where there's all this hoopla and uproar and all these things to, to perpetuate something. That's not how we work. This council is a very deliberative body. It considers things. It thinks about them. It discusses them. It debates them. And it debates the merits of it as opposed to the hyperbole of it, which is what we've had to deal with through this. So I am supportive of the amendment. I think there's other opportunities that we can interact with the public. Mm -hmm. Councillor Durley spoke last meeting about a protocol. I've had some discussions with him. I think perhaps it's something that this council should think about in ways in which we can even be more active in the community. When we go to events, I think of Love Your Hood. Councillor Papp was there, Councillor uh, Durley was there. The interaction from the community was wonderful. Councillor Kersey, you went to another one, etc. And the questions we get from, from those events and in those ways are <coughs> quite different than these very pointed um, questions. So I think we've answered all the questions they are here. Maybe I'll go through some of them. Uh, was there a 20% premium paid on the appraised value of the excess parkland dedication? Um, questions about the town's financing of the 32 acres, development activities of Mr. David Allen, did you interview former town employees and councillors, um, the uh, questions, uh, is there fraud at the town, ball construction costs, information, um, parkland dedication regarding the marketplace development, policy tools used for excess parkland dedication, town compliance with su subsection 17 to 20 of the Planning Act, the value of the KPMG contract, the Hay Street Parkland, increasing authorization period to reduce payments, 
uh, conflict of interest of land transactions with the mayor and council, questions about the community centre, contingency fund for the community centre, pre-development costs for the community centre, forensic investigations, fees paid to Mr. David Allen, fees paid to Stephen Kaiser, contract fee for corporate donations, second ice pad for the community centre, and the list goes on with supporting documents. I am supportive of the amendment and I think uh, if approved, Council can talk about other ways in which we work together with the public to continue to be open and transparent and, and uh, in our activities. But I think the time for this, and, uh, to close this chapter is now. Went a little long there, colleagues, I apologize. And, and uh, I'm going to see, unless there's anyone else ready to say anything, I'm going to call the question on the amendment that Councillor Kersey put forward. All those in favor? Any opposed? That amendment carries. Thank you. And now to the main motion as amended, which includes the um, receiving the KPMG report. Uh, directing staff to post a copy on the website. I presume that we can also um, add that to the libraries, etc. Uh, and then, as amended now, that we not move forward with a public meeting. Councilor Ribiak, real quick. Hey, just, just, just. I was going to ask, what, what are we going to do beyond putting a copy on the town's municipal website? I think. With regard to this. Yeah, uh, in standard, uh, normal terms, we put it at the front counter. We put it at the libraries, etc. So we'll continue to do that. Okay. Well, you, you, you asked, so, so let me uh, let, let me answer. I'm, I, I, again, I, I haven't put a lot of thought into this thing, but the fact of the matter is that somebody somewhere is going to say, listen, I couldn't access this because I live out in the country and my oh, connection is really slow. We hear those things all the time. Right. So I'm, I'm just wondering whether, whether in addition to the normal sorts of things, some thought might be given to some additional ways of making that report uh, available to... Uh, Okay. to the public and I don't have a whole lot of suggestions I'm okay. just just saying that that this is a case where I think more uh, would be better less is not more in this case okay well okay. can we just direct the clerk to yes look at those and okay I'm going to call the question on the motion as amended all those in favor any opposed that motion carries as amended thank you okay now we have presentation and consideration of bylaws it's been moved by Councillor Rubiak, seconded by Councillor Drilly. Be it resolved the Council of the Town of Pelham, having given due, due consideration of the following bylaws, do not read it first, second, third time, and do pass the same at the Mayor Clerk being hereby authorized to sign and seal the bylaws. <laughs> bylaw 3945-2017 being a bylaw authorizing the borrowing of money to meet current expenditures for the period ending December 31st, 2018, and to repeal and replace bylaw 3566-2014. Bylaw 3946 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of a long term agreement with the Niagara Central Dorothy Runsling Airport Commission. Bylaw 3948 being a bylaw to amend the zoning bylaw as amended for lands located on the west side of Clare Avenue, municipally known as 1011 Clare Avenue, from residential 1R1 zone to <laughs> residential 2R2 zone. Tony and Rosetta Nunziato, Upper Canada Consultants. Bylaw 3949 being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw uh, as amended for lands located on the south side of Quaker Road, municipally known as 703 Quaker Road from residential 1 R1 zone to site-specific residential multiple RM1-281-H holding zone. Tony and Rosetta, uh, Nunziato, Upper Canada Consultants. Bylaw 3950 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of development, development agreement with Tony and Rosetta, Nunziato, Upper Canada Consultants. Bylaw 3950 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of development, development agreement with Tony and Rosetta, Nunziato, uh, Upper Canada Consultants and bylaw 3951 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of a development agreement with the Han Homes Inc. Um, Ms. Weens, is that an H provision under bylaw, the, the fourth bylaw? Is that a holding provision? I said it was. Is that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, Mr. Mayor, there is a holding provision there. Okay. Thank you. Questions, comments to the bylaws? Councillor Ribiak. Thank you. This is with respect to 3945, the borrowing uh, bylaw. I, I know that we've all received questions in our emails with regard to why are we borrowing more money. So I just wanted to make uh, certain that, that people understood what, uh, what this was about. This is um, borrowing that we do every year 
<laughs> in order to uh, even out cash flow. This is to pay for bills before the uh, revenues are collected. And we do this every year. The scale of what we're doing this year is pretty much in keeping with the scale of what we do every year. All levels of government do this. Uh, I'd be interested in knowing what, um, what the region's borrowing is with regard to this. Their budget is a, what, about a billion dollars, so their borrowing may be in the, in the range of half a billion dollars uh, where this is re concerned. Other levels of government do this. It's a necessary thing to do in order to, uh, to, to pay the bills, pay salaries, that sort of thing. So there's nothing extraordinary about this. There's nothing here um, uh, that's, that's opaque, extraordinary, different. It's just business as usual. Okay, thank you. In turn to the Treasurer, is there anything you'd like to add, Madam Treasurer? Yep, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I agree with the Councillor. Just to let everyone know, I mean, the taxes come in four times a year, February, April, June, and September. And, uh, and then throughout the year, there's, um, there's bills that need to get paid. So this is um, you know, under Section 407 of the Municipal Act. Um, municipalities can borrow um, up to 50% of the total estimate revenues uh, for the period from January 1st to the end of September, and then it drops down to 25%. So our current limit of the line of credit we have right now is at $3 million, and we're just looking at increasing it to $7 million. Um, so we <coughs> can borrow actually up to $9 million with the revenues that we have. But we decided decide that the $7 million is, um, is a good number. And um, yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. I think it is one of those, or was one of those bylaws that you kind of do at the beginning of a term, and this is uh, just, just a, need an update. Need an update. Okay. okay. I think it's been like that for a while. Anyone else to that uh, to that bylaw? Thank you. And this is a, a change of four million, and it's for a short-term mm -hmm. loan. It's not a, and it'll starting next year, not this year. Okay. There were allegations in the in made by uh, someone in the community that, you know, immediate need for this money and all these other things. <coughs> Obviously, that's all been disproven, and we hope that that gets disproved uh, and clarified in uh, publications moving forward. Pardon? Through Mr. Mayor, the bylaw actually states it's effective January 1st. Thank, thank you. Effective January 1st. Anyone else to that issue? Anyone else to any of the other bylaws? Going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Kirsty, second by Councillor Pat. Be resolved the following bylaw be read a first, second, third time and passed. Bylaw 3952 to adopt, ratify, confirm the proceedings of Council of the Town of Pelham and its regular meeting held today on the 18th day of December 2017. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. And it has been moved by Councillor Durley, second by Councillor Ribiak. Be it resolved this regular meeting of council be adjourned until the next regular meeting, scheduled for Monday, January 15th, 2018, at 6 30 p.m. I do want to say on behalf of council, uh, happy holidays and happy new year to everyone. Please enjoy your the break. I think we, we may have a committee meeting on the 8th of uh, January, but our first regular council meeting will be on the 15th. We're going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Did you see it? Members of Council, public, uh, we called together the policy priorities meeting for tonight, uh, December 18th. There is a quorum, and this meeting is called to order. Adoption of the agenda. So before we move to that, um, I want to ask there's been a suggestion that item 4.2, the uh, proposed 2018 capital operating budget, be rescheduled to a more suitable meeting because it's going to require quite a robust discussion. And I'm open to the floor. Um, also with 4.1, uh, just before we go further, um, Madam Director, you if we still want to deal with that, we could deal with that. Okay, so why don't we, uh, first of all, let's just deal with the 4.2, the proposed capital and operating budget. What's your wishes? Because we're not going to be able to do this <coughs> we'll run out of time. Some suggestion is uh, I'm I'm open to suggestions, Mr. Mayor or Mr. CEO or Lip. Um, thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, I overheard some conversations about uh, perhaps rescheduling to Thursday at four o'clock this week. Um, 
I don't know if that's a, that was an idea. Uh, the other idea was to defer until January the 8th. Uh, Council does have a planning meeting yeah, scheduled that night, and I would assume that there would be room uh, on the clock to allow for a budget discussion at that same time. Members of Council? January 8th? That's fine. January that work? Works. All right, we'll do that. We need, a, we need, we need an amendment. We need an amendment. So, uh, Councilor Kersey, that the... Uh, Move that we defer dealing with the uh, proposed 2018 capital and operating budget till January January the 8th, following the uh, public meeting. Okay, thank you, Councillor Kersey. Uh, we don't need a seconder. All in favor of that? Thank you. Now moving back to the adoption of the agenda. So therefore, the uh, agenda, the, the only business will be the site plan amendment report. And that was moved by Council Ribiak that the uh, amended agenda, as, as noted here, will, will proceed. Mr. Chair, do you, do you want to call for a, whether there's any pecuniary... Uh, oh, no, agenda. pardon me. Sorry. You do the agenda first. We've got to do the agenda first. Okay. Pecuniary interest. Okay. All in favor of the amended agenda? Carrie, thank you. Any disclosure of pecuniary interest and in the general nature thereof? <coughs> None, Mr. None? Chair. Okay. None, Mr. Okay. Thank you. Move by Councillor King, and uh, we'll move forward. Okay, um, first, so there's only one item for new business under policy and priorities, and that being uh, item 4.1, site plan amendment report, 1050 Canberra Road, SP 0717. The committee receives the Department of Community <coughs> Planning and Development Report for information as it pertains to application file SP 0717, 1050 Canberra Road, and the committee recommend the staff, the council direct staff to prepare the bylaw and authorize the mayor and clerk to enter into a site plan agreement between the town and 706014 Ontario Inc. and 766432 Ontario Inc. Comments or questions? No. Councillor Lane? <clears throat> yes. Um, I have some questions on this particular. Uh, All means. Uh, my concern is with this is that. Uh, I like the idea of expansion within the town of Powell. Uh Employment, everything that goes with it. But at the same time, I think that we have to be cognizant of uh, all citizens within the town of Pelham. This particular site and the, uh, the proposal is, uh, is fine with what's going to happen there. But at the same time, there, there's some current issues uh, with this particular business as it uh, involves uh, neighboring uh, residents. And mm -hmm. the last time this particular property was uh, expanded, I believe three or four years ago, there was an expansion. And at that time, the expansion was supposed to take care of some issues that uh, there were in the neighborhood. And that was mainly due to uh, reefer trucks being used as storage and reefer trucks uh, running for extended periods of time uh, causing, uh, if you will, air pollution and noise pollution to surrounding uh, properties. And it was at that time that uh, when this particular expansion was uh, undertaken, uh, it was assured to the neighbors that the need for reefer trucks running at all hours of the day with their noise and everything would be eliminated. And in fact, that didn't happen. Now we're looking at expanding and uh, additional <coughs> loading docks, probably additional reefer trucks, which are being used as uh, storage rather than as uh, basically transportation. And uh, so I have a concern. And, uh, the concern would be is that the reefer trucks that currently sit on the property running at all hours of the day and night, days and weeks on end, uh, facing on the north perimeter of the property, uh, should be eliminated uh, with this big <coughs> expansion. And I'm wondering is if, in fact, we approve this expansion, can we, from this <coughs> particular person, get some... Uh, Uh, 
some assurance that these uh, loading docks will be used for loading and not storage with reefers running uh, for extended period of time. Now, we do have a noise bylaw in the town, and I believe the noise bylaw, as I read it, was uh, idling equipment is like two hours, and these things are like two months at a time. And uh, with uh, more parking and more uh, reefer trucks on the site, I think it's an issue, and I think all the uh, citizens around should be uh, able to go to bed at night and sleep without listening to that having to go sleep in their basement and various things like that. So I think it needs to be addressed, in my opinion. Now would be the time to address it. So I will uh, listen to any other comments before I comment further. Hey, thank you, Councillor Lane. Uh, through uh, to you, uh, Madam Director, do you want to... Uh, Mr. Chair, through you, um, Certainly this is a expansion to an existing uh, warehouse um, and uh, the warehouse is climate controlled. It is for the uh, packaging and storing of uh, floral product um, that needs to be uh, kept cool. So I'm not aware of um, any issues with respect to noise complaints. Um, we were not advised of any complaints or anything like that. Um, I'd have to ask the fire chief if he's aware of any um, noise complaints. Um, certainly where this expansion is happening, it's uh, happening south of the um, existing warehouse and the expanding the parking area further south. So it is moving it away from um, the uh, surrounding residential areas. Um, but I've had um, uh, certainly no kind of comments or feedback with respect to mm -hmm. the idling of vehicles or um, the use of the um, uh, refrigeration trucks for, I guess, storage of the uh, floral products. So I'm not aware of, um, you know, those types of concerns at this time. Chief, have you had any? To uh, Chair, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, we've had uh, this. Uh, there's one particular neighbor that uh, borders on the north side um, that complains about the reefers. Uh, this happens uh, on one or two occasions a year when their business uh, has a peak period where their warehouse doesn't hold enough, it won't hold all the stock that they're carrying. So they park the reefers and their refrigeration trucks um, along that north side. Uh, we <coughs> talked to the owners about it. Um, the unfortunate part of the language in the bylaw talks about idling trucks. It, the reefers aren't idling trucks, they're actually the reefers built into the transport van itself. The truck's not even attached to it. They line them up and these refrigeration units run to keep the product cold. Mm -hmm. The language is very difficult for us to, but we do work with the owners and um, I think that uh, under our the new expansion, uh, when we met with them with all the new loading docks and the, the expansion of the warehouse, that this overstock won't be a problem moving forward because the warehouse will be big enough to hold their inventory. Councilor Lane? Yes. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Chief. I appreciate it to you. Uh, this was the assurance that was made <coughs> when this expansion last took place, and they were and the uh, residents were, were assured that uh, they wouldn't have any need to have these loading docks and reefers run because of that expansion at that time. Now we're <coughs> looking at an expansion that's even larger, and the loading docks are there. I'm sure they're not going to take the loading docks that are there out. So uh, I'm, you know, I just, I mean, it, it's a concern for for some neighbors, and I think it, it should be addressed. I mean, uh, if in fact their people are using reefer trucks uh, for storage of, of for material, then are these reefer trucks being assessed as as buildings? Because in fact, that's what they're taking the place of a building. So, and they should be a, some kind of assessment under property taxes <coughs> to account for it. I just think it's uh, it's unfair to uh, to burden other citizens uh, with this particular thing when, in fact, they're going to have all this room that they should be able to uh, alleviate the problem. Where the new one's being built, it is, in fact, would probably mitigate all the uh, noise if, in fact, the trucks were moved to the new loading docks. And, and that's, uh, you know, I don't know if we can... Uh, uh, put that into this uh, into this uh, amendment or whatever, but uh, that's what I'd like to see happen. So that's uh, Mr. Mayor, and then uh, Councillor Durley. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Chair. Um, I think um, 
Councillor uh, Lane is right to bring the concerns of uh, neighboring residents uh, uh, to this council. Um, what I heard the chief say is he thought that this would solve the, the problem of these, of these trucks. Um, would it be appropriate, Mr. Chair, I don't know if, if we can ask the director, can we get that assurance from the, uh, the owner uh, somehow in writing um, or, you know, it, it, it appears from what the chief said, Mr. Chair, that this expansion will solve that issue. But the council makes a good point if it was promised before and it, you know, and that wasn't there. So how, how do we get that assurance uh, from, <coughs> from the applicant? Madam uh, Director. Mr. Chair, through you. So the site plan uh, is providing for, um, I think, seven additional uh, loading docks. The current loading docks are proposed to be retained um, uh, as well. Um, and the warehouse expansion is uh, essentially doubling what they have there now. So it is a substantial um, expansion that is uh, proposed to go on. Um, we can certainly talk to the owner about the, um, the issue and um, you know, see if we can get their assurances. We can put in a clause in the site plan agreement um, okay. with respect to that as well. Um, should council wish that uh, that the use of the refrigeration units, um, you know, for the storage or temporary storage of uh, the floral product is not permitted and, and build it into the site plan agreement. Thank you, Madam Director. Um, Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Durley. That was precisely my question. Can we make it a condition of approval? If, in fact, that can be, then there is uh, definitely a guarantee that it won't happen, not a promise that has been broken. So that's that's where my, I was coming from with the question. Thank you. Councillor Kersey. Thank you, Councillor Durley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if, if this is sort of an intermittent type of thing, um, and there may be circumstances where, because of the growth of their business, um, they may need on an interim basis to use a reefer truck. Could we, use, could we build into the uh, site plan, Madam Director, uh, designated parking for reefer trucks at the very south side of the, uh, the property? That's the fur furthest away from the residents and probably would buffer the impact of that. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, through you, that is certainly something that we can have a discussion with, with the owners on in terms of that. I wouldn't expect that uh, all those loading docks would be used um, for temporary storage, but if there were one or two, that they'd be located at the furthest south end of the property. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other further comments? Or so, based on uh, Councillor Ribia. Thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Just a quick question. I don't think the report addressed or, or didn't, didn't indicate what the current zoning of that property is. I think it's agricultural, isn't it? Madam Director. Uh, Mr. Chair, through you, it is uh, agricultural. It has a site-specific provision in the agricultural zone which permits the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the greenhouses that are on the property at the very <coughs> south end. Um, the dwelling as well as the agricultural related warehousing packaging uh, facility. Thank you. Um, so what we're, we're having constructed there obviously is a warehouse, an entire frankly constructural con and commercial industrial kind of activity. Um, I suppose it's zoned agricultural now, it'll be taxed as agricultural going forward. But I, just a quick comment, this is, I'm, I'm seeing some shaking of the head, am I wrong? I think the director would know. Uh, Mr. Chair, through you, certainly the um, commercial part of this business, being the oh, warehouse, thanks. the okay. offices, and so forth, have a commercial uh, assessment on it. Um, the greenhouse at the south end, uh, where they're growing some product, will have an agricultural assessment. Good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm glad for that clarification. I was going to <coughs> head my, down my usual rant around the appropriate use of properties, but it is done in this case, so I'm very pleased. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Uh, two other quick things. One, I, I do want to say, you know, it's great to see business uh, expanding. Uh, hopefully they are trying to deal with the, with the issue that Councillor Lane raised. Um, and I did 
uh, recall fondly, you know, the other expansions that they've had and the other, um, how their business is growing. So congratulations to them. The, the second uh, item is just maybe something um, we can ask the chief to look at if the noise bylaw is deficient in this area. Maybe it's something that staff can look at and if there's some sort of solution that can be proposed, not necessarily tonight, yeah. but in the future, uh, or some other mechanism to deal with this, uh, a permitting or something like that so that so the, the there's chair. a complaint from the neighbors, et cetera. Go ahead. I, I think in this particular instance uh, between uh, planning and, and bylaw, and we meet with the owners and we work out something for the south side along this way because uh, Pelham's um, has a, a very large number of floral companies and reefers are very common. And some of the smaller mom and pop places, they have reefers running on these properties. So if we make start making it specific mm -hmm. to reefers, we're gonna. I think we might create a lot of problems from some of the smaller operations. Okay. So I, I, if you maybe give us some time to yeah. work yeah. with the owners, and we can maybe come up with a solution to, to open up the south side away from the, uh, the neighbors on the north. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. Thank yeah. you. I think that would be good. Else? So. Um, Hearing these suggestions, do we want to still proceed with developing the site plan agreement next, uh, subject to those discussions? Do you want to defer this? I think we can move yeah, forward on that. So, um, Madam Director, based on the comments you received and direction from us through you, Mr. CAO, we can build those provisions in and you, we can move forward in that, in that regard. Madam Plan? Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, when we bring the site plan forward with yep. uh, two councils, we'll find an approval that we'll have. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, hearing uh, any other further comments or questions, I'll just reread re, uh, re it again that the committee recommends uh, council direct staff to prepare the bylaw and authorize the mayor and clerk to enter into a site plan agreement between the town and 706014 Ontario Inc. and 766432 Ontario Inc. All in favor? No. Okay. Thank Is, you. Should, Go ahead. Just a, a point of order. Should there not be some mention as to some of the mm -hmm. discussion of conditions that, that are there. Yeah. Well, that's what I was asking, uh, Councillor Durley. You're correct. If it's in yeah. fact, do you want to do it as staff direction or do you want to include it? I'll make it Maybe staff. I'm mistaken. Madam Clerk? Sure. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, yeah, this is committee level, so when the agreement is brought forward with the bylaw, yeah. it will um, include yeah. the directions that have been discussed. Not codify it, so I'll just say okay. in, in, including There's dealing no with issues regarding the same yeah. Yeah. Okay, you That's could good. put it in. You could, you could, we could uh, put it in, and then you or take it as staff direction. We're going to see the final. I have it, uh, I, I have it noted. Okay, so what the clerk is, it'll be part and parcel of the development of the final agreement, and those provisions will be there. If they're not, obviously we'll notice them at council. <coughs> so it's built in there. Thank you, Councillor Durley. Okay, That's good. a good Thank point. Thank you. All right, all in favor? Carried. Thank you so much. Good. All right, uh, as mentioned, 4.2, the capital and operating budget for 2018 will be dealt <laughs> with in January. There is no old business, and that being ca the case, this regular meeting of Policy and Priorities Committee be adjourned, uh, moved by Councillor Lane until the next regularly scheduled meeting for January 15, 2018. Thank you so much. All in favor? Carried. Um.